All right, you got you got the keg. You got the semi trailer full of forty thousand dollars worth of fireworks. We're just gonna roll <laughs> this out. Good. We're we're all in high school. This is real. Yeah. yeah. Have you got the sound system so we can play our selected favorites from now? That's what I call on the nose. Uh, the, the song in the background. <laughs> The song in the background, the lyrics are After midnight, we're out of control We're out of control, we're out of control, we're out of control (laughs) Amazing Adult shark, shark, shark (laughs) God awful Movie 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, because back when we started the show, that didn't sound like the name of a shitty senator. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good <laughs> friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thank you, Noah. We got Kevin motherfucking Sorbo of the Farnsworth quote. Yes. Very excited. Yes, of Farnsworth quote fame. And unfortunately, Eli will be unable to join us this week, but sitting one pond to my east is the host of Be Reasonable, the co-host of Skeptics with a K, the project director for the Good Thinking Society, and probably other stuff by now, too. Michael Marshall Marsh. Welcome back, sir. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me back. And thank you for acknowledging the Kirsten Cinema thing. It goes through my head every single time I hear you do an episode of GAM. And I just, I scream at my podcast, do you mean Kirsten Cinema? So thank you for finally <laughs> making that explicit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we, we were here first. He's All a right. dino. So it does, it does make me wonder what other senators you could like get, you could wish into existence in, in a sort of the secret kind of way by <laughs> what are the, what are the phrases you could repeat so often you manifest them into a Republican? <laughs> Mixelplick, fuck! <laughs> Damn it! So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Soul Surfer. It's the story of a Christian movie losing an argument with the problem of evil mm-hmm. inside the movie they wrote. Yep, it's pretty amazing, and not realizing it. And <laughs> Marsh, how bad was this movie? Well, if you loved the Karate Kid. But you just wish Daniel Russo had lost a limb as a punishment from God. You <laughs> will love this movie. It's it's basically that, but surfing. It's it's yep. point for sake. <laughs> well That's done, fantastic. Well done. Okay, so we should at least acknowledge that this is really a case of Eli kind of dropping a grenade on the schedule and running because this movie rarely remembers that it's Christian, and when you subtract the Christian shit. It's just a touching story about a brave young woman overcoming her disability and trauma. It's mm. a bad one, right? So Very bad. I guess, you know, at least it's not about a mentally ill guy bombing a kindergarten. Could be worse kind of a thing. That's good. It's actually a case of Eli. Well, it's not Eli. It's Heath dropping a grenade and not running, which oh. is even dumber. <laughs> we got specific requests for this one. Yeah. And it's got Sorbo and it's got Quaid and it is Christian. So I was like, yeah, Shark Week. And it's, it's got Carrie Underwood. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're there. We're there anyway. Yeah. Okay. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I mean, you you pretty much touched on it there. It's best worst remembering this as a true story. Because there's times in this film, you're like, oh, this is about a shark attack. This is someone who loses a limb to shark attack. Oh, where's the shark coming? Oh, the shark's going to eat it. But then you're like, no, it, it, it did. It did do that. And she did kind of overcome that. And we are going to take the piss out of that. But it's but this time, you, you are constantly dealing with that uh, that knife edge. Right. All right. So I was going to go with best worst rival. Mm. Okay. Now, this is apparently not based on a real person. I'm, I'm not surprised, but this is a movie about Melina the rival, damn it. Not about Bethany. Oh, 100%, absolutely. That's yeah. most of my notes is like, oh, Melina's the protagonist of this yes, movie. Yeah, she's the hero of this whole thing. Yeah. All right. We'll get to why, but she is a phenomenally good rival. She is, she says, fuck you better to the one armed girl than anyone I, than I could. That's for certain. <laughs> it's so good. She's my hero. I love Melina. And she's a great character. I was going to go with best worst manipulating Heath personally. Huh. So they've got the most adorable goddamn dog in this yes. movie. Yes. <laughs> it's the dog with like so much extra face skin. I don't know what, which type, Sharpe maybe? No. It's, it's a big giant one. So, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. What I don't know what the one I'm thinking of is the one. It's one of the ones with way too much face skin. Not what I said, but it's very manipulative. But they also do like the main character is adorable and great and she overcomes this whole thing and she's pretty awesome everybody else sucks around her her family's the worst and everybody's terrible but 
they manipulate me a lot. Most importantly, with the stump. So like we said, this is about a shark biting off a girl's arm. So she's got a stump after that. And <laughs> they adorably address this stump. At one point, a tiny little kid like Caesar, and he's like, poke your stump. <laughs> it's so adorable. <laughs> that it is. All right. Well, we've got a remarkably short story and a regular length movie on the other side of this break. So we're going to take a minute to steal ourselves, but we'll be back in a minute with all the schlock that is Soul Surfer. And so I said, fine, then let's just name them in order then. Right? Okay. Yeah, so cool. Afghanistan, Albania, Algeria, Angola. Ah, uh, uh, you missed Andorra. You're right. Whoops, yeah. Okay, so um, uh, Afghanistan, Albania, Algeria, Andorra. Okay, Andorra. Guys, guys, I don't want to be rude, but could we just go ahead and do the ad read? I can't turn my AC on while we're recording, and it's 98 degrees here. Is, I, I take it that's hot in American? It's it's not just the heat, man. It's the swamp ass. The the swamp ass. Yeah, you know how sometimes it feels like you sat in a puddle of water, but your pants are still dry. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, sorry. No, we call that bog rum. Oh, okay. um, gotcha. Well, um, why don't you try curing it with the Hello Tushy beater? What's Hello Tushy? Oh, he was very clearly talking to me. He, uh, uh, I think he was talking to both of us. That's a point. Keep your sweaty ass crack clean all summer long with the brand new Hello Tushy 3.0 modern beater attachment. It's a stylish, eco-friendly, refreshing little shower for your ass. Hello Tushy 3.0 cleans soggy bottoms like a champ, but it doesn't stop there. It cleans itself with the Smart Spray automatic self-cleaning nozzle. I don't know, Marsh. It sounds like there's going to be a bunch of electricity and extra plumbing. Yeah, right. Nobody wants to deal with all of that. But that's why the Hello Tushy beater attached to your existing toilet with no electricity and no extra plumbing needed. And Hello Tushy cuts toilet paper use by 80%, so it'll pay for itself in a few months. But what if I'm not satisfied? Well, Hello Tushy's got your ass covered with the 60-day risk-free guarantee and a 12-month warranty. So defeat swamp ass and bog rump. Go to hellotushy.com slash awful to get 10% off plus free shipping. This is a special offer for our listeners at hellotushy.com slash awful for 10% off. hellotushy.com slash awful. Awesome. I'll give it a try. All right, good. So no hurry on the ad read then, Marsh. You were at Angola. Angola, okay. right, right. So yes. Angola, and then you get uh, Antigua and Barbuda, uh, Argentina, Armenia, Australia. Bethany, thanks so much for coming in. Glad to be here. Please don't interrupt. Uh, so, Roy Hamilton, you're Bethany's manager. I hear you want to make a Christian movie. That's right. So, yeah, Bethany got, uh, you know, bit by a shark, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? That's boring. Mm. I want to sell this thing with Jesus. Oh, I was hoping we could focus on the actual Bethany, story. Bethany, oh, please, sorry. please. Sorry about that. Sorry. She's <laughs> she's kind of uppity. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She needs to read the book of Timothy. Am I right? <laughs> book of Timothy. Yeah, exactly. I actually said that. Bethany, remember I said that when, when we were being all mouthy before? I said Book of Timothy. Do you want me to answer? Bethany, oh, please. Okay. Bethany, thank you. Anyway, uh, who's playing me? Well, you know, actually, we've got some great news on that. Kevin, uh, come on in. Hey, I'm Kevin Sorbo. Nice. I'm Roy Hamilton. They call me Dutch, actually. Sweet. They call me Peanut. That's awesome. We both have nicknames. Yeah, yeah. I love your wraparound sunglasses, BT Dubs. I love yours. They're awesome. Thanks, bro. They're uh, they're tactical, actually. I use them for tactics as well. No way. Cool, cool. Yeah, tactics are important. Tactics um, are important. Tactics are the best. Guys, can we talk about the movie? Shut the fuck Young up, lady, Bethany. Watch your tone. My God, I hate you. Sorry about that. Anyway, let's make this Christian movie. Yeah, we're gonna Jesus the fuck out of this. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up on the descending ladder of ever worse production company logos. <laughs> All right, we start at the top, we try to start pictures, and then we just keep moving down. <laughs> and the thing is, as we got through the idents so for the for the logos, they started to involve more and more footage, and it was like they were trying to fake me out on when the movie started because right, like yeah. one of them was a actually at a beach. I was like, <laughs> right, this is the film now. They're right, no, no, another logo. <laughs> I was just looking forward to. A Dennis Quaid movie that's not about the Bosnian genocide. Oh, there you go. Yeah, right. About that. Small victory. Yeah, that was actually a subtext to Inner Space as well, which was, uh, <laughs> which was unusual. That should have been their tagline. Also, because I think it predated the Bosnian genocide. Yeah, right, so right. People was... really should have been paying attention to that. Very prophetic film. I've said that for years. 
All right, so so we open up finally on some home surfing videos. The first fucking spoken line is, I was born in Hawaii, and I'm like, oh, man, I feel bad when I have to settle for that opening for a citation needed <laughs> essay, and they did it for their movie. Yeah. Uh, and watching the surfing footage as well, it immediately struck me that I have no surfing knowledge. Like, I, I was worried, do, will I need more surfing knowledge than I've currently got? Because the only surfing knowledge that I have came from the 1987 California Games on the Ma Sega Master System. Okay, yeah. So like, I know you can go up and down, and I know that you disappear, <laughs> you die if you disappear over the back of the horizon. But that's yep. that's as far as I can go. <laughs> if they made the movie an eight bit, it would have been better, or sixteen, <laughs> or whatever that yeah. system was. Yeah. So the voiceovers telling us all about how she grew up, and she's like, basically, she's like. Allow me to introduce all the pertinent named characters in the film, essentially, right? And then, and then we we see these two, uh, her and her best friend playing ukulele, really bad. And I'm like, okay, that's why Eli isn't here. Anna wouldn't let him expose their son <laughs> to that level of ukulele playing. That makes sense. Yeah, but okay, I will say this girl is very likable so far, and this mm. is my best worst. This is Heath getting manipulated, and I was like, all right, she's very likable, but they will ruin it, and then immediately it's like cut to terrible christian music at like a pastor retreat shitty thing where they're playing terrible music and i was like yep okay yeah this weird fucking it. pagoda church thing beach church that they've got yeah right but they have carrie underwood and i was like don't woo me with carrie underwood how dare you she's an american idol i love her they're oh, fucking Jesus, with me do you she's the best oh hey not just carrie underwood they've got helen hunt yeah. How the hell did they get? I've got a, actually, I've got a theory that I'll introduce <laughs> later as to how they got Helen Hunt. But like, she's got a career. She's got Emmys. She's got an Academy Awards. I mean, yeah. Dennis Quaid in this film. That makes sense. Kevin <laughs> Sorbo's in this film. Right. That makes sense. Helen Hunt. Well, you know, look, when you film in Hawaii, you get a slightly better cast than you otherwise would have had. <laughs> yeah. You and, can see Helen Hunt fucking hate every line she delivers. Oh, though. yes. Dennis Quaid's loving this because he's like, oh, Christian movie, this is my thing. Mm. Helen Hunt cannot stand what's happening. No. She's begrudgingly doing the movie. No, absolutely. At any given time, Helen Hunt is trying to exit this movie and uh, it becomes more apparent as the, as the film goes on. Also, <laughs> if you look at, I don't know if you looked up who Helen Hunt and Dennis Quaid were playing, but the Hamiltons <laughs> who, uh, who wrote the, this, uh, wrote the book that's based on, they were very <laughs> kind to themselves in casting Helen Hunt as Mrs. Hamilton. And even to be fair, Dennis Quaid as Mr. Hamilton, they've, they've really done well out of that. Yeah. Uh, Marsha's actually put side-by-side -side pictures of this in the notes, mm. and it is rough. The The actual Hamiltons have their amazing Sharpay in the picture, and it's adorable, but they are not looking great. Well, when you look at the picture of them two, of like of Mr. Hamilton holding the Sharpay, it's very difficult to tell which one is the Sharpay and which one is Mr. <laughs> Hamilton. There's, there's some very there's familial similarities yes, there. Yes, that there wow, is. Wow, they have the exact same number so, of necks. Yeah. yeah, like, you know how pets, they say, like, oh, you know, pets start looking like their owners. It's very rare that owners start looking like their pets, but it's happened. It's yeah, happened. He's we don't know. Which, I mean, that could have been a golden retriever to begin with. We don't know. <laughs> yeah. Also, by the way, I mean, yeah, Dennis Quaid does not look like this guy. But mm, no. he, his tan and his dad bod throughout this movie are ridiculous. He looks like a chimney sweep at a tang factory. <laughs> it just so much blotchy orange. <laughs> it's not good. Yeah, so they, looks they, like they were shooting for it at least. His face looks entirely like it's made out of bacon. Like if you put the right offer cord into the Moink <laughs> website, you get a Dennis Quaid <laughs> head sent to you. <laughs> she also she's talking about how much she loves the ocean, and she is delighted by the ocean to an entirely boring degree and it's like it, it struck me that in every sentence in this film for the first 50 minutes somebody says either sea or surf in every single sentence it's it's remarkable <laughs> how centric they are on those two concepts yeah that's gonna be the surfing is the only personality characteristic that anyone gets in this film other than christian yeah like the only tragedy is that the shark doesn't eat more of them <laughs> Yeah, I, honestly, I was mad at this point that I know Dennis Quaid personally doesn't get sharked, but this right. adorable girl <laughs> does. Yeah. Yeah. I did like, so mom and dad here, Dennis Quaid and Helen Hunt, they're having a, a surfing competition between the two of them and the family's all watching. It's like a thing they do together. And two fun things. First of all, Dennis Quaid got hurt during this shooting very clearly. He like uh, got, you know, waved over a little too much and like, <laughs> stuck under a little too much so that was fun i enjoyed watching Dennis Quaid get hurt but it, it's a surfing movie like it's gonna 
it's going to be all about surfing competitions later, extra like professional ones. They all have the same problem, surfing movies. How do you win? How do you out surf somebody else? I know there's like actual answers to that, but it's not clear when you're watching unless you're also a pro. Right. It's not like they surf race or something where it's or, or there's yeah. a score that you're watching run up like in a baseball game or something. Yeah. Yeah. Or somebody pulls off an amazing sort of twisty, flippy type thing like in gymnastics and you're like, oh, yeah, OK, yeah, that is definitely the the thing that's made them win. There. There's, there's no, no there's no crane kick. In, yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> exactly. I turned really good. Okay. All right. All right. Well, that was a pretty good turn. I can't say that you didn't turn good. <laughs> so, yeah. So, mom and dad are having their little surfing competition. The kids are on the beach grading them. It's just such a good family. This ends in a fucking sand fight. No pocket sand, though. No. Nope. Nobody does sand to the eyes. That's that's the, the, uh, that's the one just move in the obvious. sand fight, Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, then we cut over. We see a little bit of skateboarding because this movie's too extreme. Apparently, we've cut from that impromptu uh, surf competition to a less impromptu surf competition. This is where we're going to meet K Sorbs. Oh, man. I was even more angry that Sorbo isn't getting sharked. I knew that. Yeah, no <laughs> shit. He was going to be right next to it. Fucking dumbass shark. And so we get the skateboarding thing for a second. And one of the skateboarders is like, hey, if you want to have a better sport for a movie you should check out skateboarding and the movie's like fuck you moving on yeah what's gonna go eat to my arm in a fucking skateboarding movie think <laughs> man think okay that would have been awesome man, if a shark <laughs> leaping a shark. Out into, a, into a half pipe somehow he's earned that he's earned that they, 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 they'd give him that it's like yeah to be fair the shark has entirely earned that one yeah right <laughs> but then so the movie's mad about how they got made fun of in their movie that they picked the wrong thing and they go right back to surfing and then we watch a surfing montage that's mostly as it is in reality, people just floating. Yep. Yeah, it's just lying down because, paddling. You, know, you have to wait a long time between waves. You do. Yeah. You have to paddle back out and just sit there. And they, they try and make it all exciting. They've got commentators sort of talking over the, the, the top of it. They talk about Ben Iper is in the house. They're very excited about professional surfer Ben Iper. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> he'll, he'll appear now and then. That's their kind of level of excitement. Yep. But while they're having this competition, the two girls who are in this competition, it keeps cutting to their parents on the side talking about like, oh, you know, we didn't want to worry them or pressure them to know they were competing. So, but they don't know they're competing in the competition they've entered. <laughs> right. I feel like the announcer is a dead giveaway. Yeah. 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 There's a commentator. I mean, admittedly, the commentator is about as enthusiastic as Kevin Sorbo reading a, a script on Cameo. <laughs> he's got all that kind of perfunctory <laughs> interest, but he's still a commentator. I like that Dennis Quaid gives surf advice here too. It, it mm -hmm. underscores the whole problem with surf movies as competition movies. He's like, Bethany, uh, what you need to do is surf 5.2 more units. Yep. Win. Yeah, exactly. And everybody's like, all right, I don't know, man. Tur what do I turn 5.2 times? I don't even understand what that means. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, the, and again, they, they put a commentator in there as though they're trying to help us out, hold our hands. But that motherfucker speaking Mandarin Chinese. <laughs> I don't know any of the shit he's saying. Let's say it's like, mm. slow the fuck down, man. Are you showing off how many surf words you know? <laughs> It's like, because he's got no enthusiasm in his voice, it's like he's reading it from a script, but he's not a native English speaker. And so he's just trying to, he's like someone's written it phonetically for him, but he doesn't know where the words start or end or what they okay. mean. Okay, all that's, right. That's yeah. what I think has happened there. All right. And now it's time for us to meet Melina, the arch nemesis and, in my opinion, hero of the film. So they're apparently in this surfing competition, like everybody just fights for the same wave and whoever gets it gets the points. I think that's real, though. I yeah. think that's how well, it, yeah, like, yeah. You, it's just like you you fight for the wave. It, it's really slow moving. <laughs> so most of surfing is just a, a, a paddle race. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. And I like I have no choice to, to write in my notes things like uh, she's surfing so surfily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she definitely was. 100% surfing. <laughs> Sur surfiest. Yeah. Well, she, she got the big tidal wave at the end there that I guess the biggest wave wins. I don't fucking know. Well, when that happened, the commentator said, holding nothing back, potentially one of the highest scoring rides of the day. But again, he said it in uh, with the voice of someone reading out the instructions on some self-assembly furniture. Yeah. It's like, so she, she's holding nothing back, potentially so the one of the highest scoring rides of the waves of worked the out best for Bethany. <laughs> Great. So, yeah, so Bethany takes first place and Melina, the nemesis, takes second. And so, you know, fucking Bethany can go fuck herself. Melina storms off. 
We also, I so her friend Alana, this is a, the best friend character throughout the film. She's also in the surfing competition. She took third. So, you know, all of yeah, the... Yeah, she took third. And then it turns out one of the things they were competing for that they weren't really sure they were competing for was sponsorship by Rip Curl. And Rip Curl decided to sponsor them both. First place and third place. Right. Not second place. <laughs> yes. That's fucked up. So fucking harsh. Poor yeah. Melina. Melina is the hero and they fucked her. I hate everything. Rip Curl just has a thing for blondes. Well, I was going to say, that's the thing is that the Melina is, is the only one that's even remotely of color. So what we mm. have to believe in watching this movie is they skipped over the Native Islander girl and got the two white girls on either side of her. Yeah. She's also objectively the best surfer. Again, like, I don't know what that exactly means, but she won. In my head, she clearly wins all of these. She's the best. Every time we see her surf, she wins. Yeah. Every single surfing thing we see her do, they're like, oh, yeah, that's like in the high nines. That's an incredibly good surf. Every yeah. single time she takes up a board. Yeah, exactly. But yes, the girls learn that they're getting a big sponsorship from Rip Curl. That is going to be, I, I was going to say pivotal to the movie, but is anything really pivotal other than the fucking <laughs> no. shark? But anyway, you know, hooray for them. Their, their, their dreams are being realized. And now that we've had 10 minutes of surfer or so, it's time for some soul. So we cut to Bethany going to the church gazebo. This is the microscopy scene. Right. Yes. This is, okay. This is a church event. Carrie Underwood is the youth pastor and she's running something with all these kids called Rad Night. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Rad Night. Does anybody know what is a Rad Night? Well, it's one that starts in the middle of broad daylight and finishes in pitch darkness. So it's like 12 <laughs> hours long or something. Yeah, so it's quite a night. Yeah, exactly. Because it's rad, dude. Because this movie's extreme. <laughs> the night is rad. Oh, that went yeah. right over my Maybe head. Maybe it's, it's rad as in like a certain percentage of the Earth's rotation. Like one, oh, one okay. or two rads. All, all right. All Maybe, right. Okay. Or they're being exposed to some kind of radioactive yeah, radiation. substance. I was thinking maybe like <laughs> yeah. the, the, the unit of radiation. Yeah. One or the other. So, but they're playing this, she's making this point. She's like, uh, she'll put something on the TV screen. She's like, what is this? And everybody will take a gasp, but it's zoomed way, way in. And it turns out it's the eye of a fly, you know, it's a walnut, but it looks really weird. Yeah, that sounds radical. That's a radical. <laughs> yes, thing. exactly. Exactly. So, and, and I'm, I'm sitting here going like, okay, I am dying to know how she ties flies, walnuts, microscopy and Christianity together here. But it's all to make the point that sometimes things look weird when you look at them too close and you have to back away. And that's when you see J Jesus. Yeah. This yeah. is how she ties them. You ready? If you look at a walnut really close, it looks like testicles. <laughs> and that that reminds me of Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. <laughs> yes. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. What? How is that connected? <laughs> They'll come back to it later and try to tie it back in, the and it's no better. The plans that the Lord has is her arm getting bit off by a fucking shark. <laughs> I know yes. this. Yes, it is. Yep. Yes, it is. Yep. Also. How old are the kids in this youth church? Because some in the background are very clearly in their 20s playing yep. the Guess the Walnut game, which is which is not the Guess the Walnut game you'd imagine some <laughs> of their 20s are playing, to be, to be honest. Well, but if you get close up enough, it looks like it is, though. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, but then, so that we wrap all of this up, and this is where Bethany has to inform Carrie Underwood that she can't go on the mission trip to Mexico because she's busy surfing. Oh, I love this so much because she to to explain why she's not going, she brings a lot of goods to donate to Mexico. Mm -hmm. So she's like, I can't go to Mexico, but here's four cans of spam and a pair of old shoes. <laughs> yes. um, we we cool? <laughs> we good? <laughs> she's like, well, it's Mexico. So sure, sure. In fairness, Bethany's like, yeah, I have, you know, a real job in the economy now. Yeah. I can't go. Yeah. I could give money instead of fucking four <laughs> cans of spam. Way more money than that's worth if you want, because I have a job now. But it's like, fuck you. No, you said you're going to help with the Jesus something. Yeah, Carrie Underwood's point is like, oh, so you're going to miss out on being at the Mexican orphanage if you're too busy becoming a professional and fully sponsored surfer, huh? That's that's the point she's trying to make. It's like, yeah, obviously. Ob yeah. In, in what world you, am I not taking that? Right. Yeah. Also, spoiler the point of the movie is that Bethany's going to get famous from this shark attack and have like a big important thing because she's a professional surfer and that's going to help out Christianity way more than one person going to a dumb mission thing. Right. But this movie, even knowing how it ends, doesn't realize this. So the next scene is her, Bethany and Helen Hunt, her mom. Bethany's trying to bitch about how Carrie Underwood was very disapproving of her not going to the 
mission trip. And of course, Helen Hunt is on Jesus slash Carrie Underwood's side. I mean, I think Helen Hunt is on the side of whatever lines are put in front of her at that moment. Because I, <laughs> this is where I thought, right, Helen Hunt, you can tell she is totally checked out of this Furious. film at this point. She's not interested. One scene, she's like meant to be invested in her daughter's career. The very next scene, she's encouraging her to put that career aside and go on a random trip to Mexico. And I think Helen Hunt did not even bother reading the script. I think it was like a Marlon Brando thing where mm. someone just had to hold the lines up in front of her <laughs> and she'd read them. Like, I honestly think, and this is where I wrote for the first time in my notes, there's actually a helicopter always just out of shot whenever Helen Hunt's on screen that's got his rotors <laughs> on and on standby and she just reads the lines and fucks off. And that's it, like one take okay. gone. That's amazing. That's probably well, true. <laughs> dude, in this scene, she's the whole time she's strapping a surfboard to a, to a minivan. They're about to leave somewhere. I think that's just Helen Hunt going like, film quick, I'm leaving right <laughs> yeah you have until i get this goddamn thing strapped to the roof of my van and that's when the scene's over and actually in this scene helen hunt's like all right i think you should go to mexico and the daughter's like no i have a fucking real job and and helen hunt ends with like all right it's your call honey it's all like passive aggressive i think they just got lucky with that <laughs> helen hunt was just like being angry and passive aggressive in real life <laughs> Yeah, yeah, de definitely. Because if Helen Hunt's been in actual films, she's read actual scripts. So if you put a script in front of an invested Helen Hunt, she's going to say, well, hang on, why is this the first time I, the mother, is hearing that my daughter isn't going to Mexico? Why Why is it the first right. time I'm going to be aware of this? Right. I'd already have known this. This no. is, And I'm, you know, she'd have picked up all of this stuff. No, she doesn't care. And she's just like, nope. I don't mm -hmm. know, just do what you fucking want. I don't care. Yeah, right. I'm, I, I, I have I'm a helicopter. helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. I was just writing in my notes, somebody get eaten by a fucking shark already. She might as well end every scene with like that hand motion of like starting the helicopter up. Like, <laughs> well, there's a few times she does like a hang 10 motion. And if you look carefully, she's actually just gesticulating to the helicopter. Yeah. It's the spinny, spinny rotary blades thing. <laughs> so, okay. So late that night, mom and dad are checking out the surf forecast for the next day. And I'm like, God, Jesus, can we give somebody any other fucking personality trait? Oh. God, yeah, they're looking at the computer animation of like how the waves are. There might as well be a giant shark in the graphic just off the side <laughs> of the wave. Come on, just get to the shark. Let's go. So yeah. Start your movie. So meanwhile, upstairs, Bethany and her friend are going to sneak out that night and go to the fucking beach party. Hell yeah. And of course, because this is a Christian movie, we have to play this like, first of all, that this is the first time they ever did something like this. And then also that Bethany wasn't too sure about it and only agreed reluctantly, right? Sure. Yeah, this is all her friend's fault, she says in her own biography. Yes, exactly. That she wrote herself. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Also, one of the writers was like, oh, we're going to build this shark. So this is just like the first of a few pump fakes. Yep. So they go out there and it's like, all right, party night surfing. Hey, here, have some glow sticks and a handful of chum. Nothing is going to go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but they, nothing does well, go wrong. We, they, nothing goes wrong. we don't get the shark attack yet. We get shark's eye view camera and nothing happens. Yeah, like, they fuck take it. you. Yeah, we, we cut to shark cam. And I thought, this is their full moon party. Are we even going to get a wear shark? Is that where we're going with this? <laughs> uh, so much better. And is that like so much better, Marsh? Half shark, half wolf. Is it half man half shark like right. which half is it that okay. needs to wear out these are things we needed to know i feel like you're literally naming shark movies that actually exist yeah there's, no there's all there's I'm, not a <laughs> syllable you can put in front of the word shark that's not there's an absolutely movie a movie called wear shark yes <laughs> so oh and also by the way so this is just some fucking party that the local skaters are throwing they brought a forty thousand dollar fireworks show with them yeah, at their secret party <laughs> they snuck out to a beach party yeah. with a pro firework display on a tiny <laughs> right. island just right just you can you can see their house from the water's edge all right you got you got the keg you got the semi-trailer full of forty thousand dollars worth of fireworks we're just gonna roll <laughs> this like, out all right. we're, we're all in high school this is real yeah. yeah have you got the sound system so we can play our selected favorites from now that's what i call on the nose uh, the, the song in the background <laughs> The song in the background, the lyrics are, After midnight, we're out of control. We're out of control, we're out of control, we're out of control. <laughs> Amazing. Adult shark, shark, shark. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but we're getting there, we're getting there, guys. So we have this, uh, it's the next morning. Kay Sorbs is taking... All the kids out for more fucking surfing. At the same time, by the way, this is going to kind of matter. 
Dennis Quaid is going in for knee surgery with Dr. Craig T. Nelson. Again, when you're filming in Hawaii, I guess you just get Craig T. Nelson, right? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like you're about to go in for surgery. You're just like, coach, come on. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> You're, Co- you're Hayden Fox. I know you're Hayden Fox. You sound a lot like Mr. Incredible. He wasn't a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so we get him getting ready for surgery. We get a fucking... I was I, I wrote surfing montage, but then I erased surfing and added paddling because really, like, again, that's what most of surfing is, right? Yeah, and it's it's so confusing, this bit, because as they're getting into the water, Kevin Solboy drives them all the way there and is saying, like, right now, we can't be long because I've got a meeting at 10. It's either meeting in 10 or meeting at 10. But either way, unless this is 7 a.m., it wasn't worth the trip because yeah. you're still going to be a drive back. You're going to have like an hour in the water or something. Not worth it. Well, especially even before you get eaten by a shark. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And so they actually start surfing for a second. But all we get to see is the actual actors very clearly miss a wave. And then they mm. cut to stunt people who are mm-hmm. like magically like 10 feet ahead and on the wave yeah. all of a sudden. It's so bad. And the stunt person for Bethany is Bethany, I yes. think. I think she plays herself doing the, the stunts. Even though she looks not that much like the actress, they don't have the same hair or anything. They've got to always sort of film her from an awkward distance so that uh, you can't tell that that's not even the same lady, even though they only have one arm. It's yeah. a different, you know, it's very clearly not the actress. Yeah, Bethany does the stunts. That's cool. She actually mm-hmm. is a professional yeah. surfer. She's, she's a yeah. good surfer. As, 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 far, as far as my limited surfing knowledge will uh, <laughs> allow me to say that, she seemed decent. Yeah. yeah. So at this point, I was like, I need the goddamn shark to happen already. And the movie heard me shark attack. It was pretty great. It took longer for the shark to show up in this film than it did in Jaws, a film famous for the shark <laughs> taking a long time to show up. Right. <laughs> yeah. Now, OK, so in the shark's defense, he's just snacky, right? He took mm. a bite of her arm and he's like, that's plenty. I'm good. <laughs> they they freak the fuck out, right? Like, so so her and her friend are, like, just hanging out after a little bit of surfing, and suddenly her arm is bitten off by a shark. The dialogue is great as well at that point. Because, like, hey, do you believe we get to come here every day? Yeah. We're so lucky. Do you believe we come here every day and that, you know, nothing can ever happen in the immediate future to change either that or how many arms we each have? Isn't it great? <laughs> right? Yes. Let's sing a song about the total number of arms we have, two each per person. <laughs> And shark attack. shark attack. Yeah. And are there sharks that do that? That are like, oh, I'm doing, you know, I'm doing a locale right now. So I'm just going to do one little. Does that happen? Uh, clearly it that happened. So fast. So it, it popped its face up and down. I guess in reality so... this did happen. Yes. She didn't yeah. lose also a second arm or a leg or whatever. Right, it's so right. fine. It would have been funny if he'd gone around and gotten the other arm. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine reality the, the shark kind of like went for her and pulled her under a bit or something like that. Not just like she was on the board and he just like pops his head up, goes yoink, and then takes her arm and then goes back <laughs> under again. It was the sneaky shark attack was on, it was on screen for such a short amount of time. I genuinely laughed out loud and then felt terrible because I remember this is a true right, story. Yeah, and exactly, she did actually exactly. lose her arm. Yeah. So, but yeah, but so case arms rushes out. They, they, they get her out of the water. He sends his son a hat. He's like, you know, go to the car where my cell phone is and uh, call 911. I'm like, nah, I probably should have brought the cell phone and left it there at the beach, but okay. Yeah. They make her paddle back by herself as well. They don't help her paddle back. Thank you. And I really wanted her, and she does a great job paddling back, but I really wanted her just kind of go in circles. Yeah, right. Like, oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> She's just like rolling over on the board, doing backstroke, regular stroke, backstroke, <laughs> regular stroke with the one arm. That would have been good. The kid gets to the car, right? He doesn't have the keys. I wanted her to have been holding the keys when this happened, but no, it's Kevin Sorbo's got him. So. Yes. Yeah. So when this happens, Sorbo is so unhelpful. He's right there and he's just like, everybody swim. And they're like, yeah, man. We yeah. were gonna. Yes. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And he doesn't go over and like help Bethany swim either. He's just like, everybody fucking D up and swim evenly. Let's go. <laughs> and with the kid getting to the car as well, they play that whole sequence out like it's a slasher film and he's been chased and it's like, oh, the shark was biting from inside the house. The whole time. <laughs> so good. He actually fumbles with the door like the shark's right behind him. Yep. Like he's just like, yep. gling, gling, keys, gling, 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 drops them. <laughs> then he smashes the window. Yeah. And then, okay, so, so, but they get her to the car. We get, we cut to the hospital where dad's surgery He's about to go in for surgery and they come in and they're like, oh, hey, some girl got half eaten by a shark while she was out uh, surfing this morning. This uh, is <laughs> the, the worst doctoring ever. Doctor mm. runs in. He's just like, there's a shark attack. Teenage girl looks exactly like yours. North Shore. Maybe yours. I don't know. Hard to say later. That's it. They cut from there. Yeah, they couldn't have narrowed it down anymore. It's like a shark. Sorry, a shark has attacked a blonde teenage surf girl who recently t- got a pro surfing sponsorship and then turned down a trip to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> they might as well have said that. Who is it? Yeah, Could right, be right. Could be yeah, anyone. Exactly. Absolutely anyone. It would have been great if it was somebody else, actually, at this point. <laughs> I, yeah. I love to, they're, they're driving away with, uh, Kevin Sorbo and the, and the son, and the son's yelling and up to him. He's like, Dad, there's a lot of blood. And I'm like, well, I would hope so. I mean, come mm. on. This is a very mysterious way. This is a Christian movie. I don't understand. <laughs> I feel like we're running up against the problem of you. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Yep. Just go. Sorry. We cut momentarily to uh, Helen Hunt, who yeah. at this point seems to be reading dialogues from either a different scene or a different movie. I can't tell, <laughs> but they're not related to this at all. And she's got a piece of paper in her hand at the time. So I think she was actually practicing her lines for the next film she was doing <laughs> in this shot. Very possible. Yeah. But her character, it's so dumb. So Helen Hunt apparently just randomly is on the road and she sees an ambulance go past her. And then she sees Kevin Sorbo's truck right behind the ambulance and she recognizes it. So she's like, fuck that's my daughter and then she starts praying mm -hmm. and she's like please god I, presumably don't kill my daughter just teach her a good lesson <laughs> and that's actually the lesson of the movie yeah yeah and then we cut to the ambulance the emt is there to saying like look in my eyes don't get, don't pass out etc and i know that that's what he's supposed to do but it it's, it seems real flirty when he's doing it with this. Uh, I, I don't know. It, just, it's, it kind of creeped me out for just a second. But we get get her to the hospital. She's full blown blurry cammed at this point, right? Oh yeah, no, we know that she's in a bad way because we're seeing her through a fisheye lens. Yes, ironically, right. <laughs> <laughs> we also <laughs> we also get the doctor running back into Dennis Quaid and being like, "Hey, buddy, yeah, it's your daughter. Okay, time for surgery." And yeah. <laughs> he's. Quaid is already under anesthesia, so it's kind of, I feel like it's an awkward moment. He's just like all happy and being like, wait, my daughter got bit by a shark. <laughs> yeah, and what I thought here was like, why do we keep focusing on Dennis Quaid at this point? I thought, right, got it, plot twist. The shark turned out to be venomous, and they need to shrink Dennis Quaid down and inject him <laughs> into her to get the venom, venom out. <laughs> He's got form. He's got form for it. Right, yeah, exactly. We do I get know. Dennis Quaid being like, uh, scared dad but he's got the hospital gown which was hilarious because he's like trying to like fight off people and his ass is hanging out <laughs> he's just running through i enjoyed that also he was un under anesthetic for a knee operation as well so he's like all wobbly legs <laughs> <It's amazing>. yeah <laughs> doesn't work out well for him he just gets up and immediately falls that like that would have been more oh that was, was, fun. was on me you guys were halfway through the knee surgery damn damn <laughs> that's rough but yeah, yeah. So and then we linger on fucking surfer heaven long enough to make sure everybody gets the fucking light at the end of the tunnel reference there. Oh, I did not get that at all. OK, this is a better movie than I thought. Thank you for that <laughs> so, all right. Well, very he, good. he needs a minute to catch up on all the nuance and everything. So we're going to take a quick break, but we'll be back in a minute with even more Soul Surfer. So uh, how are you looking forward to the trip, Noah? Well, I, I mean, I was looking forward to it, but then I remembered that it involves going to an airport then being around other people for a week and then going back to an airport. Right. But what's the problem with that? Oh, oh, I, oh I hate everything and everyone annoys me. Ah, uh, OK. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Well, how about you just tune out the world with a pair of Raycon's everyday earbuds? So, so wait, I, I, I wouldn't have to hear small talk? No, not at all. Or larger talk? Nope, nope. You can just tune out the whole world and listen to your favorite playlist, an audiobook, or your favorite podcast. And let me tell you, Raycons are the best way to listen. They come with a bunch of gel tips for your comfort. And unlike some other brands, they don't stick out of your ears. They even have a 32-hour battery life, so you can listen to what you want, when you want, and for a really long time. Yeah, but wireless earbuds are always so overpriced. And I usually come home from airports with a lot of new fines and court costs and stuff, so... Yeah, but Raycon start half the price of other premium audio brands, and they sound just as good. Raycons come with a 45-day happiness guarantee, so you really can't lose. He's right. You cannot lose. Raycon actually sent us a pair to try when they started advertising with us, and it's the way I listen to all my podcasts now. Oh, hey, Heath, what are you doing here? That's personal endorsement. Oh, right. Yeah. No, got it. Okay. It. Uh, so, uh, I'm sold, Marsh. How do I get a pair? Create your own soundtrack with Raycon right now. GAM listeners can get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash GAM. That's buyraycon.com slash GAM to save 15% on Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash GAM. Wait, what's Raycon? It does. It, it's, this is the end of the end. I don't think it counts. I feel like that counts. <sighs> Andrew? <laughs> hey, uh, Gabriel, you got a second? Oh, yeah, God. Uh, what's up? Yeah, so we have a pretty serious problem. Right, the the climate change thing, yeah. We, what? No, no, 
the, the 1930s were actually way hotter. It's totally fine. The climate change thing, that's nothing. Yeah, I, I don't think that's accurate. Whatever. It's not, it's not caused by humans, so. Again, that's wrong. But I, either way, why is that relevant to you? Okay, I, I feel like we're getting off track. There's a girl in Hawaii who is skipping a missionary trip to Mexico. And, and that's your big focus right now? Yes, Gabriel. That's my big focus right now. She told her pastor that she would go, but now she has some kind of like professional surfer thing and she's backing out. So I need to teach her a lesson. I was thinking I send a shark to bite off her arm. Okay. I feel you went straight back to shark again there. Like, why, why can't you just cancel thing. her surf thing? Dude, it's a, it's a photo shoot for rip curl. I'm not an asshole. I'm a job creator. I'm not going to cancel photo shoot. Fine. Fine. Well, how about what if a shark almost attacks her, but then I personally save her with a flying angel magic on camera and then everybody becomes Christian. Mm, ah, now I'm saving Jewish people and Muslim people and like atheists. No, no, absolutely not. We're not doing that. Okay. Um, what if you just help out Mexico? Okay. If you're not going to take it seriously, Gabriel, just get out. Okay, you're not yeah. Helpful. Sorry. Stupid. Um, okay. Yeah. Do the shark attack thing. Great. Great. Shark attack. Right. And then we deal with climate change. Yeah. Plants need carbon dioxide. Okay. And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with everybody chilling in Bethany's room, waiting for her to wake up. Yeah. And she, <laughs> she wakes up and first thing she does, she's like, I'm going to touch the stump. And everybody's like, don't touch the stump. Don't touch it. She touches it. It hurts. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And the good news is she wasn't all that good at ukulele anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, and she bailed on that missionary trip, so deserves it. Right. Exactly. Yeah, could hurt. Fat, reasonable. So, yeah, everybody's dad, like, runs everybody's like, uh, you know, she says, oh, it hurts. And he sends one son off to get the doctor. And she's like, I'm thirsty. Sends another son off to get a drink or whatever. And then he starts crying. And she's like, yeah, don't be a whiny bitch about it. Okay. It's just, it's <laughs> right. Like, that's her fucking reaction is, come on, man, man up. Okay. And Dennis Quaid trying to cry act <laughs> what was happening there he, he did a he did a lot of smiling yep. he did like mm -hmm. joker smiling what the fuck was yep. he doing yeah there was definitely some joker smiles going on there there's this a weird moment with case orbs like I, I feel like this was like a vin diesel contract moment where like he comes in and everybody starts talking about how heroic he is yeah you know it's like thanks for saving me and he's like no she kept me calm it's like yeah she kept you calm by swimming herself back to shore while you left her right that's yeah, how right. that's how she kept you calm <laughs> by not involving you at all i didn't want to i didn't want to put myself out i knew i had a big drive coming up yeah <laughs> i didn't i had a meet in a 10 hey just circling back yeah i feel like you should have helped me swim so <laughs> no so and and there were there was this weird moment though too where like she's like oh thank you so much for saving me and then he has the you know he's got to put it back on her but he has nothing to say so he's like yeah, you know, I got us. You are very good at getting your arm eaten by a shark, as it turns out, much better than most. <laughs> and then Dr. Coach Craig T. Nelson comes back in to be ridiculous again. He's the worst goddamn doctor. Right? I love it. I love it. He comes in and he's like, I heard you're feeling some discomfort. And Bethany's like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. My shark bite is discomforting. That's how I describe <laughs> it. That's good. That's good. And then he's like, All right, so. Let's talk about being one armed. It's uh it's like half what you're used to. <laughs> Something like that mathematically. D doesn't it seem like that's a speech for tomorrow, the next day? I don't know. Yeah, I, I love this doctor so much because he because even when he comes in, he's like, Hey, how's my favorite patient? And I really want to be like, No, I mean your dad. Like the stuff he did under anesthetic was hilarious. I'm like, we'll be talking about that for didn't weeks. even know his ass was hanging out of the cut. It was great. It was great. He's got a nice ass. And the doctor also says to her, you know, of course you're not feeling bad, you know, not to mention you've lost sixty percent of your blood and also fifty percent of your arms. Yeah. <laughs> Right. When she says, you know, oh, it's a lot of pain. He's, he's basically like, yeah, you know, your arm was ripped off by a shark. So it's going to be hmm. a lot of pain. Yeah. He's a great doctor. He also kisses her on the forehead at this. Uh, at, what at is the that? End. That's, That's a little creepy. That's so inappropriate. Huh. <sighs> and then as they walk out, he turns to the parents. And he goes, she's a living miracle. Christian nailed it. Gam. <laughs> Gam. We got the Jesus money. It's a living problem of evil. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And just after he leaves the parents as well, what I really want, you see him walk down the corridor and I just want to just sound guy in the background, just put this in, just him saying quietly to another patient, hey, how's my favorite patient? And just did it all <laughs> It would have been such a lovely touch. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, so that night she's laying there all bummed about being one arm. Dad's reading the Bible. Yeah. She's like, hey, Dad, anything good in there about um a shark attacking my arm in the Bible? No? 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 Nothing. nothing. Okay. Yeah, okay. I love that. So, yeah, I'd love him to find a bit. It's like, yeah, it says here that if your uh, hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does. Apparently, it, it is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than with two hands or two feet to be thrown into eternal fire. So, you know, oh, well, there 25% you go. less chance of that happening to That's you now. Right. Good Glad thing it wasn't a whale or you'd still be in there. Really? <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, and then he's like, how you feeling? She's like, oh, all purple-lipped and pale. And he's like, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. makeup lady really overdid it, didn't she? She's like, yeah, when can I surf again? Now, I wrote Act 3 in my notes. I underestimated this movie. Uh, it's Act 2, guys. This this movie has a few Act 3s, I think. It, it, this movie yeah. thinks it, it's got Act 3 sorted. And then it's like, <laughs> oh, we've got like another 45 minutes to an hour of this shit. Um, <laughs> yes. Act 4. Can we, we can't have a lose another limb. No, stupid. Can't no. do that. Um, <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So, dad and daughter Christianity for a little bit together. Uh, we get like some time later, she's in the hospital watching... John Stossel talk about her on the news. <laughs> okay. But what's on the TV is the fucking best. Yeah. So she's getting talked about on the news and then she's like, all right, I'm gonna change the channel. Okay. More shark news. Fuck. Click Jaws. All right. Jaws is on the second channel. I pick Fine. Jaws two is on the other one. All right. Fuck. Click. Now there's a shark delivering the news. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> And of course, this is all the setup for her friend Alana, the the other surfer girl, to show up. She hasn't been able to, you know, because she's still scared about the whole like day the shark got eaten. She hasn't been able to show up since then, since Bethany woke up. So this is the first meeting between the two of them. <laughs> but it's been days, right? This isn't this yeah. isn't weeks. This is months. It's been days. It's not that odd that she hasn't been no. there in the first couple of days. No, it's weird that the movie guilts her so much for it, right? Yeah. Because the other thing they to talk about is that rip curl shoot and how she's not going to do it anymore. It's like, what, they really, the sponsors called you up days after a traumatizing shark incident. And we're like, look, guys, it's now or never. We can't wait any longer. <laughs> it's got a, I know it's been 48 hours since, you're, since your friend lost an arm, but clocks are ticking. It's been 48 fucking hours, though. <laughs> and, and like, this is where I really, so this was the first moment in the movie where they had a golden opportunity for some truly human dialogue between these two friends that went through this trauma, and they had absolutely nothing that's what I mm. really recognize just how like it, there, there's not a lot of God, but there's plenty of awful in this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of the friends just like, oh, yeah, no, I've, I've been doing all right myself. I've been home, you know, using my uh, arms. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. That photo shoot. OK, so but she gives fucking uh, Alana permission to do the rip curl shoot without her. I really wanted Rip Curl to make her do a shark theme suit shoot just to capitalize on the news. You know, it's topical. Right. Yeah, exactly. They, obviously, they would have done that. Why mm. would Rip Curl not use the shark attack girl at that point? Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. I'm sure they wanted to, and she didn't want to do it. I would, I would imagine that. That's sort of how they play it later. But yeah. So she gets discharged from the hospital. Mom's driving her home. She's thinking about surfing. And of course, all of her friends have put welcome home surfboards on the on the. Uh, road on their drive for her drive home because everyone communicates exclusively in surfing in this world <laughs> <laughs> oh and then of course so they get home but there are reporters all over their yard they can't even get in their driveway fuck you this did not happen so on this right, i'm not an expert but you see the field reporters stood in front of the camera with a little microphone with a round fuzzy thing on top doing this all and now today jim we're here at the home of so and so when there are multiple reporters doing that do they stand in each other's shot because they are standing so close together. They're definitely appearing in each other's shots. And they're appearing on each other's mic as well. Like, just move along the drive a little bit. Give yourself some space. Or, I don't know, make it a competition. Make it like a surfing competition. You block each other. You right. run in. Yeah. Take, yeah you got to race to the camera. Yeah. There's one camera. You race to it. Whoever gets there they, first. They, or they come in <laughs> waves. The cameras come in waves. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, but this is so that dad can be action-y and cool, right? He gets in the van and, like, speeds away and knocks down the bushes and drives around to the back of the house. The reporters will never think of that, you know? <laughs> what was the strategy behind that? Because, like, 
he gets in the car as if he's going to run over all the press yep. in his minivan. That's I what like, I thought. This is interesting. Yeah, because he makes such a big thing about it as well. It's like, because he moves Helen Hunt over. It's like, come on, get out of the way. This needs a man to drive this. So she has to like scooch into the middle where she'd be like sat on the gear stick or something like that. Where she certainly wouldn't have a fucking seatbelt. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then all he does is kind of like drive around the back of the house through a bush. Brilliant. And then she's really impressed. She's like, I had no idea you could drive like that. It's like, drive like what? He drove straight in a straight line <laughs> through a bush. <laughs> you didn't think you could drive in a straight line? I mean, maybe, maybe you're saying more about Dennis Quaid than, than we thought you were actually saying. Wow, you can drive in a straight line. Well done, Dennis. Yeah, right. See, if he like hit the NOS and he like drifted from the front yeah, right, the right, right. now no. it's exciting. That would be, yeah. Still stupid, okay, but exciting. So we get this amazing fucking scene. So she's back home from the hospital for the first time. The invasive reporters are on the lawn. The awesome fucking dog comes and sniffs at her missing arm. Oh, right. and she licks the stump. I was so yeah. excited. It's her actual dog. It's, it's yeah, the it real is. Hamilton family dog. Yep, yep. And it is a Sharpay. Like I said, I got I got that wrong. My bad. I thought Sharpays were a little So yeah, and they, but so they have to go through this whole like, wow, it sure is hard only having one arm scene with her so they keep having her trying to do shit that oh you sure needed two arms for that but it inadvertently makes her entire family out to be a bunch of assholes that won't just be like why don't you sit down i'll make you a fucking sandwich well yeah they're assholes but she's ridiculous too she's like okay i'm home i got one arm i'm gonna do some sharp knife cutting with that giant knife and they're like no 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 don't okay let me start off with tomato chopping <laughs> yeah yes <laughs> <laughs> and then they give her the ham to open and she goes for a kind of hold the packet to the counter using your boobs tactic, which was innovative. It was, yep. it was bold, yep. but that doesn't work. No. Nope. And then they're like, why don't you get some bread? And I'm like, how about why don't you sit down and I'll make you a fucking sandwich? And I want them to be like, um, ketchup, his ketchup, squirt it on anything, anything. It's a one handed implement. It's, it's one handed. It's fine. Just squirt on whatever. It does, doesn't matter. You but can, no, they finally get her to leave the kitchen and she goes straight to her room and she's like, okay. Huh. Ukulele is good for one. Oh, God damn it. Nope. It's a two. It's a two hander. Oh, fuck. Just before they leave the kitchen as well, there's a really underrated line in the background where the younger brother opens one of the cupboards and says, Where's my spam? Because she's given all of his spam away. And I thought, Oh, that's great. And I thought, You know, I guarantee Heath has asked that question on at least one occasion. <laughs> okay. Well, I'd never, I'd never get into a position where I didn't know where my spam was. Hell yeah. Man. It doesn't make sense <laughs> what you said. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> So finally, they, they, they sort all the sandwich stuff out. They're all sitting there eating. And Dad starts to explain that Inside Edition has offered to buy Bethany a prosthetic arm, provided that she will do an interview wearing it afterwards, which is kind of weird, but sure. Right. And they're made out to be the bad guys here, I think, Inside Edition, for like capitalizing on the story inside of a movie that capitalizes on the <laughs> yes, story of the yes, arm. Yeah. <laughs> yes, mom has this big long speech about how, well, that would just be exploitative. And I'm like, Helen, we know you're an actor. <laughs> <laughs> like an angry one. Also, like the mom is only suspicious, like she's only uh, only uh, upset when it turns out the daughter's got to do an interview with the arm. So, oh, yeah, the, the TV documentary is just going to give my daughter an arm. That seems reasonable. Oh, and they want to talk to her as well. Well, this wow. is now. Fuck I, I don't even know why they do that. <laughs> give her the arm for nothing. But come on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then there's this great moment where they they haven't started eating yet because they have to say <laughs> grace. And they, of course, normally that involves everybody joining hands. And her brother is sitting right next to her and he reaches out. And she doesn't have a. A hand, obviously, and he just doesn't. He just he just blanks for like a solid thirty seconds. Touch the stump, asshole! <laughs> he just I don't want to touch it. It's wrinkly. I'm not touching the stump. And it makes me think when they wrote the film, they wrote that moment being like awkward, like oh, he reaches out and there's no hand there. But then they didn't write anything for him to do when right. he realizes there's no hand there, and so he's just like L line. L yeah. All right. <laughs> right, right arm green, everybody. We're doing <laughs> twist of grace. Let's go. <sighs> So, and then the fucking VO remembers it was supposed to be narrating. So we get this quick, like, you know, having just one arm sure is tough montage. And I would have, like, I, obviously, again, we're making jokes about this. This is a real thing. And it, it, it obviously was really tough and everything. So I don't want to be too flippant about it. But yeah, we watch how she can't 
Can't put her hair up. Can't tie her bathing suit. Can't buy her own apples anymore. You know, all, all of that stuff. Yeah, and the spirit of this voiceover, like the first line of it is, every day of my life, as far back as I can remember. And the spirit of what we're seeing is, I expected her to say, you know, as far back as I can, I can remember, I had two arms. That's what I thought was coming <laughs> right, next from the yes. way that they're playing that line. <laughs> right. Right. But now she's living in like infomercial universe for the stump extender and like right. you can't do anything and <laughs> right. apples are flying everywhere. Well, okay, so she's walking out of the store after buying the apples and the paper bag tears and I'm like, okay, but that like that happens to people with any number of arms. <laughs> I mean, <Right>. like <laughs> Yeah, five arm people are like, oh, the the bag broke. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> Like it, it does, but it breaks as she's trying to put it in the, the basket of her bicycle to cycle home. It's like she's been out of the hospital for a few weeks and you sent her on a bike to get right. groceries. That's <laughs> right. So you harsh. couldn't have gotten got you I saw your van, mom. Jesus Christ, get some she's fucking impressive. apples. Whatever. Bethany's awesome and everybody else is terrible. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Everyone in her life is awful. Yeah, speaking of it's time to go back to Dr. Craig T. Nelson. So we go back to the hospital, <laughs> it's time for her to get her bandages <laughs> taken off and we have the big stump reveal. He takes yeah. off the bandages and he's got to be, he doesn't have any, you know, that's a good looking stump. Uh, what would you say is a bad looking stump? Right, Are yeah, like, exactly. where, <laughs> where does this fall on your stump scale? And they, they do CGI out her arm. And this might be the least valuable use of CGI since they got rid of Henry Cavill's mustache. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so and and the, so she looks at the stump in the mirror and she's just like, I can take it. And honestly, that's a big problem with the writing in this movie is that I'm sure that this girl was super tough and everything and had a can do attitude about it and whatever. And that's that's very impressive. Mm. But by writing the character like that in the movie, we're basically cheated out of any opportunity to really explore the emotional toll that this would have taken on her. Right. Yeah, because every time we see her, she's basically like, I can do it. And that's it. Yeah, I think she wanted it to be a story like that, and then they made it into a Christian movie, and they're like, well, we can't have any emotional nuance to this at all. Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> Could have been. Yeah, so the, because of that, the proxy we get is everybody else learning to cope with it, but that just makes them look like massive, massive, like, arseholes, where right. she's like, no, I'm I'm getting by. And, oh, no, you're deformed for life. Oh, my God, you're deformed for life. It's like, no, oh, mom, I'm, I think I'm all right. I'll... I'll be fine. I'm doing all right now. <laughs> right. I can ride. I can already ride a bike. It's been a fortnight since I lost mom. Yeah, right. I'm already riding a bike that has two sets of brakes on it. So I'm already thinking <laughs> I either only need to brake very sharply or only need to brake very casually. <laughs> and I've got to make that de decision up front before I leave Yeah, right. House. No, beforehand. Yeah. <laughs> so. Every time she breaks the bike, it goes in a circle. <laughs> <laughs> And the thing is, so Helen Hunt, when she does this kind of breaking down, I can't cope with it. She does it like crying onto Dennis Quaid's shoulder, but she does it outside. She has to run out the hospital and do it outside. And you can see the plants moving and you think that's not wind. That's the air from the chopper blades spinning up because <laughs> this scene was meant to take place indoors, but she just wouldn't be held back in the first. Like, right. I'm already walking to the chopper. Right. You can get me on the way or you're not having the scene. <laughs> this, this backstory about Helen Hunt makes me so happy. <laughs> She hated them. There's a point which made me even happier. We'll come to it, but it made me incredibly happy that I that I'd thought of this backstory. I, I think I know exactly <laughs> the point. So, yeah. All right. So then we're, we're heading back to church so we can work Carrie Underwood back into this plot. Now, I want to say Carrie Underwood is a great singer, I'm sure, or whatever. But when it comes to acting, she has a number of different nose wrinkles, right? Like she crinkles <laughs> her nose in various ways to signal different emotions. And that's the extent of it. She's okay. Multi-dimensional actor. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Exactly. Yeah, It's like uh, the Samantha from Bewitched approach to magic, but for acting. <laughs> oh, right. Exactly. <laughs> so I just, Di -di 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 -ding. Yep. And I've, I've done some acting. There. <laughs> yeah. So Bethany meets up with Carrie Underwood, the youth pastor and Carrie Underwood says, I was praying for you every minute. And I want Bethany to be like, you mean after the attack? So, because <laughs> you obviously weren't before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah after the not. attack. After, yeah. I was hoping you wouldn't specify right. how that works. You didn't sleep. You were praying every minute. I don't believe. Hold on. Is this like how a walnut looks like balls from up close? Yeah. <laughs> okay, you know, it's like it is it like is. that. It yes. is. Thing is, this isn't even problem of evil stuff. This is problem of not giving up your new job to do missionary work stuff. Right. That's what the problem right. is we're dealing with here. <laughs> but I really wanted Carrie Underwood to be like, hey, can I can I take a photo close up of your stump? Because that'll really spice up Rad Night. Because this game <laughs> could, could really do with a little something. <laughs> <laughs> but I love to, because like, she's like, at this point, this is one of the first times that the Bethany character expresses any emotion. She's like, you know, how could a loving God possibly do this to me? And 
Carrie, to her credit, starts off with no fucking clue. But then she says, and I quote, I really believe something good is going to come out of this. And I'm like, okay, but it has to be better than having two arms, right? For <laughs> this to make any sense. You know, the box office on Fireproof was really good. Uh, I think something good is going to come out of this. All right. Oh, and then we get the the fucking the revenge scene, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is really oh, weird. This is so good. <laughs> so the family's at home that night. They get a phone call. The brother answers the phone, right? And he's like, Dad, we have to walk into the next scene, but with the camera facing us so that no one can tell what we're looking at for an <laughs> inordinately long time. <laughs> Oh, and it's it's that they they got a vigilante militia to go out and get revenge on the shark, and we see they've sort of lynched the shark. Yes, they what they've done. The shark. Yep. And then Dennis Quaid checks the shark's mouth against the board, the surfboard that has the bite taken out of it, like Cinderella's fucking slippers or something. Yeah. And, I, and in case you didn't even know that's what was happening, you've got surfing legend Ben Aiper, who apparently led the lynch mob against the shark, who when uh, when Dennis Quaid holds the board up, he's like, you see, that's a perfect fit, bro. So yes, we got him. It's, it's like CSI Hawaii. It's amazing. Well, okay, but so <laughs> what made them think it was the right shark up until that moment? Have they been bringing every <laughs> shark to Dennis Quaid's? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's just like a lineup along the beach of just sharks dangling from trees. <laughs> like really strange fruit. <laughs> like an Appian way of sharks all over Oahu or something. Yeah. <laughs> so did they get the old professional surf? Like, were they catching sharks via surfing? <laughs> Is that what we're to believe? Oh, maybe they used them as bait. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah, you need somebody who can surf fast, you know. Mm. Ben, we're going to pour chum all over you. You go out there. You lure them to, to land. They A lot of them will go on land for yeah, like a, you know, 20 feet on how or so chummy you because are, of the, yeah. the blood. So, and, and there's no point to, like, I thought, wait, are you guys going to open them up and go after the arm or something? Like, like what? <laughs> why would you kill, you know, but at any rate, so yeah. So they got revenge on this poor damn shark and look again the shark didn't even go after any other limbs it obviously didn't even like it anyway <laughs> so then we, then we get alana at her uh, rip curl photo shoot and so we haven't mentioned this to this point but a ton of this movie is just an excuse to watch young girls in bikinis the whole time right especially an excuse for christians to do that yes yeah absolutely. Uh, and that's all this the only purpose of this scene i think Right. I mean, we watch Bethany look jealously on and everything, but we get plenty of that elsewhere. Yeah. I mean, obviously this rip curl shoot, I just kept thinking to myself, they make so much more money if they featured the really famous girl, Bethany, in the ads. Obviously. Like they get so much social yes. kudos. It would be just, it's the smart move on every level. Yeah. Well, they even bring that up in the scene. They're like, you know, you should be out there with her. And she's like, Oh, I'm not ready for that yet, which sort of undercuts what they're trying to play this as, as of her being jealous of her friend's ability to do mm. that. Right, but she gives it like the, the speech from Ryu at the end of Street Fighter. She's just like, <laughs> no, ceremony means nothing to me. I'm always seeking the next challenge. Go All right, relax. Go do dragon punches in a waterfall. Yeah, right. Asshole. <laughs> you can do that one armed. There you go. Yeah. And then, okay, so then we get the scene where she's like cooking breakfast for the family. We see that she's like learning how to how to deal with chopping and, and, and whatnot. Why is she doing this? Immediately we cut to her chopping vegetables with her feet to hold them. Yeah, and like holding another giant to... sword instead of a regular <laughs> small paring knife. And apparently the real Bethany did actually do this. Apparently yeah. this is something the real Bethany would do. But I watched it thought, one, this is 100% how you lose at all. Oh, yeah. And you know what they say, dismember me once, shame on you. <laughs> dismember me twice, <laughs> okay. shame on me. If she walks into the family after this and is like, all right, I chopped my foot off with the knife. That's kind of funny, right? Like, no, it's... <laughs> I'm, one, one of each. I'm tied with the shark, if you think about it, yeah. Also, she's she's made <laughs> breakfast, right? And the breakfast is, you know, half an orange marinated in her feet and then covered in floor bits because she drops it all <laughs> yes! over the floor. You know, so uh, bon appetit. But then she says, also, homemade banana bread. I say, like, did, did she make banana bread? Because where's that? Do they do insulated oven socks? Is that a thing? How does she do banana bread? <laughs> How do they not show us that? She throws a banana up in the air, slices it a hundred times. With Fruit one ninja style. Dance. Yeah, right. Come right. on. All right. So, yeah. So she comes out to, to serve everybody breakfast. 
And they're, they're like, what's the occasion? She's like, I'm ready to surf again. And everybody's like, wow, we really figured that would be in Act 3, but no, we're going to do that now. Huh? Okay. <laughs> so the whole family heads out to surf, and we have a whole, like, can she do it? She's so determined kind of a, a sequence. Yeah. Dad gives her some advice again. He's like, try using your arm's arm. Do you mm. do, do it with your arm? She's like, thanks, Dad. Yeah. Got it. Arm. Cool. Yeah. His, his advice is, you know, um, what you should try and do is 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 balance rather than trying not to balance. You should be trying to yeah. balance. Wait, off, sorry, off Dad, will you repeat it? Did you say balance or don't? Did you say don't balance? And also, of course, we have to go one family member at a time telling her it's OK. You can give up now. This would be a perfect time for you to quit, you know, and so that. Yeah. You know. This would have been a perfect time for a shark to take the other arm. Like that would I would yes. have genuinely enjoyed this movie. It was like, oh, yep, that was definitely too early. Shark loves to smell the stump. I don't know. Yeah. Shouldn't have done that. I, I had the same thing, but with a leg. <laughs> but she gets up and she surfs. It's like, yeah, you know, this is a perfect time for the movie to quit. This is the end of the film. Yes. Like she she's got back on the board. Brilliant. There's orchestral music, the strings play it up. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> the dog runs in. He's like, "Oh, we're doing a cute scene with dog surfing at the end." Oh, no, oh, no, you guys oh, are all right. But how much in. more do you have in the script, guys? Jesus <laughs> Christ! Yeah, but so she manages to surf, and everybody's like, "All right, well, you got that out of your system." She's like, "Nope, I'm going to surf in the regional competition after all." So that's apparently the plot, or, or at least <laughs> the plot of the remainder of Act Two. But first, we have to head over to a, a Hawaiian Thanksgiving. <laughs> I have to point this out. We see a juggler as we pan over this. And I, it, since Angela went to the whole trouble of making a bingo square for it, I, I, I have to like bitch about his technique. But he had people on both sides of him. He was kind of tight sitting down. This is really the best you could hope the guy would do. So he was. You fine. know what's a dick move having a juggler for the one armed girl's first Thanksgiving? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It's right in her face. He's really rubbing it in. It's, yeah. it's, that, that's what you should criticize. Uh, you him can for. do two, two for one. You can do two hand, two and one. I actually met a one handed juggler. He was very good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, but Dennis Quaid's going to give a big speech about how he loves his children no matter how many arms they have. Right. It's pretty funny. He's like, everybody, everybody, I uh, just like to give a speech. We're, uh, we're very blessed. Stay with me. Stay with me. <laughs> <laughs> we're blessed. I, I know what you're thinking, but yeah. Well, something. God. What they say is, you know, we're, we're blessed to be uh, spending another Thanksgiving with our daughter. Well, 86% of our daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like if you look at all of our collective limbs and you divide it by the total number of them, very few of them have been eaten by sharks. We're blessed. We're blessed. <laughs> so, and then, of course, we have to have the scene with, and every time k Sorb shows up in this movie, everybody's just like, you were so heroic and you had such rippling muscles. He's like, yeah, I did have some pretty rippling muscles <laughs> during that moment. He's like, he has the whole like, oh, I just, I wish that I could have done more. And I'm like, what, what more? Rip the arm back out of the shark's mouth? I'm like, <laughs> Could you I didn't beat up a shark. I didn't get a chance to because I was helping everybody swim in by saying swim in. Right, right. I no, I was just direct. In retrospect, I should have beat up the shark. <laughs> All right. So then we get the unveiling of her prosthetic arm. Right. And this is so fucked up. I, I can't imagine that this is how this really went down. They have Inside Edition's film crew there filming her trying it on for the first fucking time. Yeah. Seems like you, uh, you know, maybe do a dress rehearsal or whatever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think maybe they did. And maybe you don't have the guy who's who's hosting it be the weirdly, oddly, smarmiest, creepiest guy you can possibly find. Yeah. He, I don't know what <laughs> tone he's going for, but it's so <laughs> smarmy. Yeah, she's trying on. She starts like trying to pick something up or whatever. And he's like, sorry, ooh, that is not a weight bearing arm. It's not a weight bearing arm. What the fuck does it do? <laughs> right, yeah. Otherwise, it's just hanging there. Why the fuck would you want it then? But isn't isn't that what a prosthetic would be? Like, it's not plumbed into her... She's just strapped it on. It's not plumbed into her nerves. It doesn't, like, move anything because she's surprised right. that she can't, like, use it to lift a surfboard. It's like, what, what did they tell you you were getting? <laughs> yeah, exactly, oh. exactly. Tony Stark promised me this was going to be way more badass. <laughs> yeah, in fairness, in my head, it was going to be, like, more like an Iron Man thing. Yeah, I, I had, like, a bionic arm in my head. <laughs> Give me that thing Bucky had, assholes. What right, is yeah, exactly. God damn it. Get, get me the Wakandans. But yeah, no, but that arm isn't good enough for her, damn it. The dog doesn't like it. The dog can tell that's a shitty arm. <laughs> he attacks it. That's so <laughs> Ginger's the bet. Ginger's the name of this dog. I was yes. constantly charmed by this, 
I love that that's not the actual name of the dog. The dog's real name is some Hawaiian thing, but they changed it to Ginger. This this movie's been whitewashed. Why change yeah, the name of the dog? What? That's such a dick move. Really? Right. They changed yes. the name of the dog? Yes. Fuck everybody. I hate this so much more now. I, I don't understand why you do that. Because surely the dog is going to be less good at acting if it's having to respond to a name yes, that is right. its name as well. Right. So, okay. So she runs off to her room. She's very upset about that. She runs off to her room, breaks the arm off of her Barbie doll. Right? I like that. I thought that was yeah, a good Yeah, that's moment. a nice touch. Oh, sure, sure. And then I was like, stop sucking me in. She's a great character. I don't like this. All right, everybody else sucks. Fine. She says Fine. as well, I don't need that arm to surf. It's like, no, you, you don't. It's it, it wasn't for the surfing. It wasn't there to aid your surfing. No. Nope. It was for like other things, <laughs> social situations and stuff like that. You, yeah. It, it was never there for the surfing. <laughs> Yeah, right. But no, of course, this is the scene where mom like Googles Venus de Milo and, and shows her, see, our lack of arms can be beautiful. Oh, yeah. Right. The whole point is like Bethany's kind of down in the dumps. She's like, guys want normal. And mom's supposed to be like giving the counterpoint to that. But fun fact, Bethany, guys have literally no preference about arm number. If I'm just like, <laughs> maybe I'm just speaking for me, but I feel like in general, like zero might even be preferred by a lot of guys. Well, I, think I think we're three. fine with any, if you're attractive to us, it's not because of arm number. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's often, when you, when you fill in like online dating profiles, it's, it's often, there isn't a criteria there to specify. And right, that's exactly. There's not even a place to put the number of arms that you have. I mean, yeah. if somebody put two armed on their dating profile, that'd be <laughs> crazy. I'd be intrigued. <laughs> I'd be intrigued, yeah. That's really padding your resume by that point. <laughs> <laughs> Skills, juggling. Okay, okay. So yeah, so mom shows her the Venus de Milo and says, see, that's pretty, and you have way more arms than that bitch. And now no, she's... No, what she says is, she's got less arms than you. It's like, no, come on, she has fewer arms than you. It's like, see, Bethany, what would you rather be? One-armed or have irritating grammar? That's the choice that you can have here. I thought, is, is mom going to like... Google other famous one-armed people for inspiration. I'm going to get like the killer from the fugitive. Yeah. <laughs> Drummer from Def Leppard. There you go. Absolutely. So yeah. And now dad's going to help her learn to one arm surf with a quick montage. Yeah. So Bethany's like, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to become a professional surfer again. I'm going to right back into it. And she says, I don't need easy I just need possible because of the God thing from whatever they said before. God, mm. you can do anything as possible through God or something like that. So she says that I just, I just, I don't need easy. I just need possible. And dad's like, all right, well, don't, don't mess up our thing. You need possible plus God. It was God and the thing. Yeah. And God isn't possible. So that fucks it all. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I like the way they build this montage, right? Like, so she's going to relearn to surf starting off on big ass surfboards and then going to like successively smaller boards. I did not understand that. I didn't understand initially when they showed us all of the boards stuck in the sand, getting in sm like smaller and smaller boards. I did not understand. I thought it was them visualizing a competition. So you're going to start at the, the, the early round, which is a lot of people. Oh, right, and right. And the later oh. round, then at the end, there's very few people. Uh, I thought no. that's what they were saying. I think it's easier to catch a wave when you're a beginner with a long board. Yes, uh -huh. And then like the professionals go down to a shorter board because they can make like better cuts with it or something like that. Right. Uh, yeah, that, exactly. That, that was not clear to me. That, that became clear <laughs> during the montage. But to begin with, I thought, why are you visualizing a competition through the medium of different <laughs> size surfboards? <laughs> yeah, but that was so that for those of us who can't tell good surfing from bad surfing, you could tell, oh, she's she's getting better. The montage is proceeding. It's so gotcha. dumb, though. The montage, they're analyzing videos of her. So, like, she mm -hmm. goes out and she's kind of rusty or whatever. Well, she's one-armed. And they're analyzing the videos. And they're like, okay, see, that time you fell down. Write that down. You, you got to still stand up. Okay. Dad, what did you say earlier? Did you say balance better or worse? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> better. Okay, write that one down, too. Better chai, better yep. balance. Got it. And I love how the montage ends with her chopping bananas, and like as if to say, like, Oh, she's gotten pretty good at chopping now. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, bananas are one of the lowest preparation fruit imaginable. Yeah. You don't want, you don't, they're very easy to chop because they don't roll around like a tomato would, but also you don't need to chop them. Right. This chopping is just shoreboarding. <laughs> yeah. Just eat, eat the banana whole. The traditional way of eating banana is not chopping. It would have been pretty funny if she was just eating a banana like unskinned, just like right into it as like a power move. That would have been funny. <laughs> All right, well, she's learned to surf, so it looks like things are about to happen. They're not, but it kind of looks that way. So that makes this the perfect upbeat to take another break. But first, let me get back to the hard sell. Can Bethany still surf? 
Why wouldn't she be able to? Isn't surfing one of the better lost an arm kind of hobbies to have? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the transparent conclusion of Soul Surfer. Hi, welcome to typical god-awful movies ad experience. I'm a voice that will slowly gain personality characteristics such that I'm more confusing to new and occasional listeners. Can I interest you in a thin veneer of setting to soften the fact that I'm just going to read ad copy at some point? I mean, not really. I'd rather just hear about the product real quick and then I can get back to the show. It's cute. Whatever. Now, uh, let me just work in a few pop culture references along with a familiar grinds my gears type complaint about dealing with retailers. Hey, folks, are you waiting for this ad to get to the point? Well, whether you're reaching for the fast forward 30 seconds button, enjoying the meta references or missing Eli's joke smithery, Cuts Clothing keeps you feeling good and looking sharp. That's right, Noah. Five years ago, Cuts founder Steve Borelli set out to create clothes for every occasion the modern man faces. From their signature buttery soft Pika Pro tri-blend tees to their cozy Hyperloop French Terry fabric hoodies, Cuts elevates clothing staples with cutting-edge fabric technology. What did we say? Technology? We are contractually obligated to say technology. So get ready and stay ready for any occasion with clothes that combine classic designs, universally flattering fits, and next-level textile technology. GQ magazine even calls the classic Pika Pro Tri-Blend Tee the only shirt worth wearing. And this month marks the Cut's fifth anniversary, and they're doing it big with two collection drops, a product launch, and a week-long special event. So join the celebration and get 15% off site-wide by going to CutsClothing.com slash GAM. That's CutsClothing.com slash GAM for 15% off and access to anniversary events all month long. At least do a callback. You already did. Gah! Stupid. So, great to have you home from the hospital, honey. Um... How are you feeling? Uh, not great, if I'm being honest. Because of the uh, missing the arm? Miss- missing arm, yeah, that's a factor. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I'm going to finally dice these tomatoes with a meat cleaver. Hey, 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 I'm, I'm just going to I'm gonna take that cleaver away. Uh, yep. Let, let yep. me take yep. care of those tomatoes. Um, weird that we even had the cleaver out. Yeah, that is weird. weird. Okay, thanks, Timmy. I guess I'll just fire up the bandsaw and cut some round edges into these two by fours by eye. <laughs> Ah, nope, nope. Also, do not do that. Uh, actually, I gotta put that bandsaw away. I don't know why I have that out. Hey, Bethany, maybe just relax for a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna go hang out in the backyard. Great, great, great. Yeah, that's good. Um, Don't do any, like, you know, arm stuff when you're out there. Fine. Yeah. Fine. Okay. It just feels like you're all amped up and you keep doing crazy arm stuff. I, feel I like won't. I won't. Just gonna chill out. Okay. Okay, sounds good. I feel like she is going to do arm stuff. Hey, honey, uh, maybe don't use the chain. And she's juggling the chainsaw. H- how is she even wow. doing that? No idea. Fun fact, two by four is actually 1.5 by 3.5. Nerd! This is why nobody likes you. I'm going to exploit your story for money. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back for still more of this shit, and we're going to rejoin the action on the big regional competition where Bethany is ready to surf, damn it. Yeah. We also get, for no reason, there's like a a TV, and they're just playing the news for some reason. (laughs) On this beach, they have a television set up playing the news. I mean, is it is it for no reason? Well, yeah, okay. It's for the most <laughs> ham-fisted thing ever. Lazy it's like, ass reason. Yeah. Apropos of nothing on this uh, news program that's playing at this surf competition on the beach, there's lots of victims of a storm in Thailand. I'm Anderson Cooper, and that was the foreshadowing segment. Yes, exactly. Back to you. Had to place this in time. It was right after the big tsunami. And the way they did that is as she's walking out to her competition, she runs across her church's booth raising money for the tsunami. (laughs) So (laughs) stupid. And the thing is, it's like, look, they're going to be organizing a trip to help these kids in Thailand. And Bethany, if she invites you, maybe go this time. You're running short on limbs. Yeah, right, right. Exactly. A second time. (laughs) Exactly. The chopping is even harder after that. So, and then Alana and Melina get there to start talking shit. And I'm like, way to commit to the rivalry. She loses a fucking arm and Melina is still talking shit on it. Okay. All awesome. right. 
I love this. This this movie thinks Melina is the bad guy still. So how is Melina still the bad guy? She's only raced once. You know, right. didn't even win that race when we nope. saw her. And since then, there's been a shark attack, and somehow Melina is still the bad guy here. <laughs> well, and I love to that they they come up and they're like, "Hey, uh, Bethany, the judges just offered to give you a five minute head start because you know you're." your arm thing and she's like no i don't need your pity and i'm just like well good because that would be fucking weird (laughs) again i don't know that i understand the scoring but that's just fucking weird no but the thing is with that because she turns it out i don't need that you don't need to make any special allowances for me i i just will get on with it no nobody needs to make special allowance which is the message here is that we shouldn't make extra allowances for people with disabilities they should just suck it up and overcome because the world needs its inspiration porn (laughs) you're <laughs> right yeah exactly <laughs> but so but we get them out there paddling along uh melina steals bethany's wave well yeah melina's about to cut her off but then alana throws a block <laughs> yes and blocks melina from blocking bethany and, and i gotta say like full contact surfing sounds great <laughs> yeah that's think- a fucking sport I think the blocking is real, but I don't think you're allowed to have like tag team stuff where like your buddy is blocking people for you. I don't think you're allowed to tackle. <laughs> <laughs> this whole scene I just wrote, I don't understand this spot well enough to comment on the entirety of this scene. But then seconds later, Bethany broke a board. I was like, oh no, I can confidently say that's bad. She breaks yeah, a board. Right, I can yeah, confidently exactly. say that's bad. I'm, there, I'm back on board. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Bethany's board breaks, so she can't keep going. She just couldn't handle those great big waves. And she's also very upset with Alana for tackling her nemesis. She's like, no, I want to beat her like at surfing. Not, I mean, I could have tackled her. <laughs> that doesn't require two arms. Did we discuss that tackle beforehand? I feel like we didn't. Now you make me mad. <laughs> yeah, but she didn't do very well, and, and uh, Melina won. And she's very upset. The news is harassing her even more. Again, like trying to play up this whole. And she needs her privacy in a movie about her. Doesn't really. It kind of rings hollow to me. If the next like half hour was just a movie about Molina being awesome, that would be perfect. <laughs> I would have enjoyed it. Yeah, no, it'd be, it'd be perfect. I'd watch that film. Yeah, but Bethany, she she's ready to give up, damn it. So she marches to her car. And there's a couple little girls that want her autograph. But instead of giving them her autograph, she gives them all of her surfboards because she's through with surfing. Or is she? <laughs> right. And there's no way those kids should accept those boards. There's no, no way those kids should. Those kids are being dicks by like just accepting like a 200 pound, uh, 200 dollar surfboard. Yeah, right. No. And I love the way the kids because it's so clearly obvious. She's like, I'm sick and tired of this. And the kids are like, can we have your autograph? She's like, I'll do you one better than that. She's all angry and stuff. Like, you don't take something somebody gives you in that situation. And also her whole family's just standing around and nobody's like, a kid, just hold hold on. Hold on. You're you're giving away (laughs) like a thousand dollars worth of surfboards here. This is this is not that you didn't buy. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Can we we get a selfie? All right. Hashtag giving up. Click. (laughs) assholes and then okay so then we get mom and dad arguing uh, you know like mom saying uh you're pushing her too hard and dad saying you're not pushing her hard enough and that's about as much as this writer can handle yeah and and, and again all the wind you can see going through helen hunt's hair in this uh, scene is all from her helicopter and standby the, yeah, it's just right the there. <laughs> that they had to redub this scene because of the noise of the blade she was that close to- <laughs> she's just hanging from a rope from the next <laughs> <scene>. <laughs> I love too that they're like they're right at because like we get the scene of Bethany hearing them argue out the window or whatever. It's like, why would you go a little further from the fucking window? <laughs> <laughs> a little closer to the helicopter, she wouldn't be able to hear you. I mean, come yeah. on. But yeah, but Helen Hunt is basically telling Dennis Quaid that you can't regrow another arm with gumption, and he's not so sure about that. Yeah, Bethany's like moping on the beach later, and Dad comes up. She's like, hey, didn't you say something about I can do all things with God or some bullshit in the book you're reading? He's like, ah, yep, I did say that. You're not dead? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. She's like, all right, kind of moving the (laughs) goalpost. I did not expect him to take the you don't have it all that bad tack, but that's the one he goes with. God didn't kill you for not going to Mexico, so um, you're welcome. I mean, look, right. <laughs> if your could be worse is you're not dead, you you might as well give up. There, there's no pep talk here. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> God, especially when you think dying equals going to heaven. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> There's also this great, like, terrible fucking dialogue. He's like, you know, you just have to listen. And she says, listen for what, Dad? And he says, for what comes next? That's honestly what all the screenwriter Act could come three, up honey. with. Yeah, listen for Act. Right, exactly. <laughs> and go. All right. So then we we head to the airport where Carrie Underwood is getting all the kids together for another big mission trip. Yeah, not just the kids. She's also, she's got a lot of adults around her. And when we come to her, she's listing everything in this grown man's toiletry bag. Like, did you bring your shaver? Did you bring your toothbrush? You're like, he is in his 30s. You don't need to do an inventory check for this man. Leave the guy alone. Did you bring a juice box for the plane? <laughs> okay. But yeah, so Bethany shows up out of yeah. nowhere and she's like, hey, youth pastor, can I come on the mission at the last minute to fucking Thailand yeah. so that I can... You know, atone for my arm sins. <laughs> Mind if I tag along to Thailand? I'll just turn up last second at the airport and you'll take at the me airport to Thailand. Yeah, this right. is post 9 11 and everything. Yeah. Yep. And that's fine. Yeah, I'm a 13 year old girl. I haven't told my parents I'm going. I'm sure this will be fine. Take me to Thailand. Yeah. Yeah. So Carrie Underwood's like, yeah, yeah, we'll no, find it. It's a, like a one arm thing for you to do. Like, <laughs> So then we, we head to Phuket post-tsunami, and that's the real reason Eli couldn't be here, by the way. He still hasn't recovered from learning that there's really a place called Phuket. <laughs> oh, and as we're setting the scene of them being in Phuket, we look up and there's a helicopter there. And it's like, there's yes! Helen Hunt's helicopter. Yes! I swear to God, I didn't set up this weird running gag just for this shot of a helicopter. But there it is. It's got a big cargo box with Helen Hunt in it. Yeah, no, it's, it's very clear. So, yeah. So and then, of course, we have this like they're driving through post tsunami. And of course, it's, it's it's almost as if to say, all right, guys, you spent a whole episode trying to you know work your way around comedy about a one armed girl. How about comedy about the tsunami? Yeah, they're they're driving this bus through a Sarah McLaughlin commercial. It's yeah absurd. <laughs> and like it just it seems like the bus wouldn't drive through rubble like there'd be roads <laughs> and there'd be rubble near them, maybe but uh, through. Yeah. There's a line in here as well where, you know, Bethany gets out and gets introduced and the lady they introduced to says, oh, you're Bethany. I've heard a lot about you. It's like, have you? We didn't know she was coming until she got to the airport. So we right. told you about <laughs> Bethany. And, that, and then I realized, oh, <laughs> Carrie Underwood spent the whole time in Mexico bitching about the fact that Bethany ditched them. Oh, That's right. That's how you heard That's... a lot about Bethany. <laughs> so. Hope she gets attacked by a shark, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> But of course, it. the reason that we're lingering so much on the on the poverty and the disaster is so that we can like so that she can so obviously have the oh wow this makes only having one arm in a rich country seem pretty okay you know oh absolutely this is the, the message here is put your woes completely into perspective with some good old fashioned white person volunteerism yep God. yes exactly right because then like they get there and they they just start like fire brigading bags of rice and I'm like really this is what you guys came for I feel like. Any of these guys standing around could have done that. I just wanted Melina to turn up and absolutely crush her at passing those bags along. Like, she's just so much better at her at passing bags. It starts just intercepting her, her bags. Yeah, her bags. <laughs> passing them over top of her. <laughs> so. Okay, she's surfing a bag now. Weird. That's impressive. Crazy. So, okay, yeah. So then Bethany's helping at the medical tent when this old injured lady starts telling her tsunami story. You know? She might as well say, oh, I lost so much more than just an arm that day, you know. But. <laughs> it's almost like Bethany was zoomed in on testicles. But now <laughs> yeah. she's zoomed out and sees a walnut. Yeah. Jesus. But why, why, in the context, why are they making this traumatized Thai lady teach each white girl she meets her life story? You know, this, this, right. is, this is what she's doing here. And honestly... On the plus side of it, the smug volunteerism that we're seeing here, the white savior stuff makes me feel a lot better about taking the piss out of this film about a real life story about a girl who lost an arm. This, this really helps yeah. me get back into the zone. I mean, <laughs> there is that, but also at the same time, there's this woman talking about the devastating loss of life, like the, like historic loss of life. And mm. I'm looking for a comedy in. So there's also <laughs> that. Okay. There is a comedy in here right now. You got to admit, right? So. They start passing out bottles of water and Bethany's like, oh, is it safe to surf here now? Like, is the tsunami fully over? And the whatever the mission, some other missionary is like, yeah, you know, everyone's just scared a little bit. And then a little kid from Thailand comes up and immediate. This is what I was talking about at the beginning. He immediately walks up and he's like, boop, I booped your stump. Booped yeah. Your stump. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, and, so and, and and this is, of course, the kid who hasn't spoken since the day of the tsunami. I have him down as tiny Tim, but Ty. <laughs> so, I've never been sadder that fantastic. this was a, not a written medium that we do, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, and then she fucking heals everyone through the power of surfing. But this is <laughs> ridiculous. This is utterly ridiculous, because she says, like, what? why doesn't he want to go swimming? It's like, because... One, all of his family just drowned in a massive wave. And two, he's about four. You don't let four-year-olds go swimming by <laughs> no. themselves. Stop trying to get little children drowned. <laughs> Listen, the whole village was destroyed, but now there's a white girl with a little kid, four-year-old in the water. Fixed it. Yeah. Power of surfing. And she gets in the water and I, and I wrote, yeah, okay, I take it back. Now would be objectively the funniest time for a second shark attack. <laughs> right now. <laughs> Yes. No, you're right. You're right, actually. So, yeah, she teaches the kid how to surf in the sense that he sits on her surfboard and she pushes him back and forth and everybody on the shore claps. And then all the kids rush out to play in the water because they're not scared anymore because of her caucasity. I don't <laughs> and they, they, all, they all like spontaneously clap for her. Have, have either of you guys ever spontaneously clapped for anything that wasn't a live entertainer? Oh, no, I'm pretty sure that's way too much emotion. Sure. No, absolutely not. <laughs> right, mm -hmm. yeah. No, you... I actually like to do that at the end of a Christian movie when we're in the theater. Oh, like that's right. Yeah, I've clap. seen you do that. <laughs> and every single time I've done that, the audience does it. They're yes, like, All right, they're it already be, getting up and getting their Christian. stuff and everything. They'll sit back down and do it. Yes. They all feel guilty. They're like, oh, I'm just doing stuff. <laughs> this would be anti-Jesus if we don't do it. But so, and this is where Bethany's VO kicks in. She talks about God and how, like, you know, her surfing power has washed away all their fear. They miss an obvious baptism reference here or something. But anyway, she, she's, she's all fixed now. And, and so is Thailand, actually. Everybody is fixed. So she heads home. And damn if she doesn't have a whole fucking table covered in fan mail when she gets there. She's inspired the whole world. So this is this is super weird because, first of all, she gets back. She's like, hey, I'm back from my last minute unannounced trip to a natural disaster zone. And the response from her brother is, how was your trip? And she says, great, great, yes. great is a very weird way to describe your humanita <laughs> humanitarian aid mission. Oh, no, no, it was fantastic. Yeah, it was such a lovely time. Honestly, amazing, <laughs> lovely. But as you say, there's a, the room, the whole house is just filled with with fan mail that her brothers have opened, which feels a bit intrusive yep. that they're yep. talking. But then I thought, no, actually... They're probably vetting that because 100% there was some weird stuff in there. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> they, they've done some good. Yeah, they've, they've yeah, done a good job. Good job, brothers. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Bethany, somebody sent you a copy of Farewell to Arms. That's fun. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so Hemingway, right? But Helen Hunt explains, you know, she's like, why would people be such a fan of me if I'm a failure and I can't even surf good anymore? And then Helen Hunt tells her about the power of trying her best. And now it makes sense that God would make a shark eat her arm a lot. Anyway, so yeah, but that's going to kick us into the she's going to surf again moment montage, right? Where dad's going to teach her all about one arm surfing. He has a special one arm surfboard that he's made. Oh, I love that because she's saying I can't I just can't do the thing without some way of controlling the board. And he goes, hold on. And he gets down this special board that he's made and he, he's basically he pulls out this new board like he's fucking Q from James Bond. Like, yeah. Now pay uh -huh. attention Bethany, just look around this area here <laughs> and there's a handle for you to hold on to and I want to be like and there's a secret button on the back of right, the handle yeah, that fires tranquilizer darts up the <laughs> <laughs> Sorry dad, what, there's a handle what did you call it? <laughs> You're a genius. And he literally says, I'm a genius like mm. 10 times here. And again, keep in mind that like this is based on a real guy who was probably there as they were writing. I mean, you know, he was involved in the writing of the book. And they also have this moment where like Helen Hunt has to be like, are you sure hanging handles off the surfboard isn't cheating? And they have to like actually grind the movie to a halt while they explain why that really totally doesn't matter. <laughs> and it doesn't. I mean, obviously it doesn't because, you know, like surfing is the part where you're standing up and your arms aren't really involved in it and everything. But I love the way the whole goddamn movie has to grind to a halt to answer that question. Yeah, it would have been better if he didn't get out the, the, the code regulation book of right. all of the rules to start, start <laughs> so like, leafing it through. According to rule seven, <laughs> paragraph B, yeah. yeah. So she can surf on the thing. Now they have this dumbass moment where like she seems to like apparently run into her friend Alana because, you know, they were both in the same ocean after all. 
Right, they were, but also, right, Alana didn't go to Mexico, didn't go to Thailand. Where's her shark bite? Right? <laughs> right? She's an atheist. It's fine. She goes to hell again. <laughs> yeah. But apparently their conflict vis-a-vis pushing Molina over is resolved so we can go straight into a one-handed surfing montage. I, 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 honestly, it's it's an insult to this montage to call it a surfing montage. There's sit-ups, one-armed pull-ups, fucking rollabola, apparently. <laughs> It's weird that they had sit-ups because that's pretty much the same difficulty, right? With, yeah, I think I feel like arm number. Yeah, I feel like that's. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it might be very slightly easier because you don't have the weight of your arm to lift. Right, right. You're only eighty six percent in it. Yeah. <laughs> and and now okay, but but that ends that resolves with the national surfing championships, which means we're almost done with this episode. Everybody's like getting autographs and snow cones and shit in the establishing shot. And then again, the movie grinds to a halt so they can explain the scoring to us. I'm like, yeah, movie 22 minutes left, including the credits. Perfect time to explain what the hell has been going on this whole time. (laughs) (laughs) But we cut from that to like we get all of the named characters and stuff. You know, everybody's there or watching at home. Carrie Underwood is watching from home. Nose crinkled nervously. (laughs) Yeah. We also get Molina back here Mm -hmm. right now. She's the best. But Bethany is going to like passive aggressive Christian her here. So she's Mm -hmm. like, hey, Molina, I really appreciate you being my rival. I love you just like Christ loves you. And Molina's all rattled by that. Oh, Oh, yeah. It's 100% in Molina's head. It's absolute mind games. You love to see it. She's completely got her. Yeah. Weaponized forgiveness. The Christian Mm -hmm. specialty. I was just furious because I was like, Melina's going to lose here and I'm going to be so goddamn angry. This is bullshit. Melina's the better surf. Right. Yes, absolutely. And then, so, so dad has to give her some last minute advice and it's such fucking Jedi bullshit, right? Where he's telling her about communing with the ocean and that she should be able to sense the best wave and she has a sixth sense about surfing i don't fucking know and anyway. i don't think it's like you know when you're blind you hear better when you lose an arm you sense a wave better right I don't think right that's no like the, the, her right-handed wave feeling is doubled yeah <laughs> so yeah but so the first heat is underway we get some surfing some clapping some scoring some kevin sorbo the bethany sure does surf that wave good yeah. And and again, we really do find out that surfing basically consists of kind of going up the wave a little bit and then kind of turn around and go down the wave. Like you turn around when you get to the top. That's the key. You get near the top and a... then you turn. Yep. And then you kind of come back down again. And that's that's what we see for a few minutes. Yeah. They give us the alleged scoring system. So there's going to be like a 25 minute round, which is 23 minutes of sitting or paddling, <laughs> yeah. I imagine, if you have to watch it all. And They get scored on 10 waves, the surfers in the competition, but they keep their best two waves for the final score. That's how you get your final. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So really, you just need two good waves, and then you sit there and you throw blocks. You block. Right, yeah. You get two good waves. Which is what Melina does. So, yeah. And now that, by the way, is so that's the final round, right? The first rounds were 10 minute heats. And I, I, cause I wrote my notes like, can you imagine you're all the way through all of these fucking heats? You're finally to the end. And they're like, this one's 25 minutes long. I, mean, I would gnaw off my own fucking arm. Are you kidding me? <laughs> but yeah, but we get to the final. Alana made it to the final. Bethany and Melina are all there. And it's scored out of 10, right? Because like Melina's first score is 9.25, yes. which is an incredible score, presumably. I assume it's out of 10. And then, you know, the next one she does is a 9.5 out of 10. So she's won. She's definitely won this because out of 10, she, out of 20 in total, she's got 18.75. Right. She's only dropped yeah. 1.25 points. She's not losing. She's not coming down from that high. Absolutely. So she just needs to block for the rest of the thing. And then the movie was like, yeah, actually, she is going to do that. Yeah. And I was like, yes, this is yeah. awesome. Melina's going to use good strategy. This is fantastic. Right. But fucking Bethany's going to use even better strategy because, yes, she's blocking her, but water allows you to go under it. So she goes underneath Melina, does a fucking special move, like a, a wave racer move. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of like a days of thunder. Like she's going <laughs> yeah. high. She's going low. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, exactly. And and so she manages to catch the best wave and she surfs it so act three-ishly that she earns a 9.7. 
I really wanted her to get an 8.5 for it, leaving her mathematically incapable. Of <laughs> like, oh, she's got a really great score of 8.5. But 10 so, um, would, uh, not We're do done it. here. Yeah. <laughs> Pack up and go home. She just swims back in. All right. Yep. That was it. But so, but that's the thing though, right? So she needs two good waves. So she needs one last wave. And to get that, she needs to use her Jedi surf instincts. Yep. And I'm like, if she, if she had Jedi surf instincts, she wouldn't have gotten her arm bitten off by a shark, guys. Let's be <laughs> honest. Okay. Right. So, st- <laughs> so stupid. So there's the lineup. They're all floating there. And then Bethany, all of a sudden, spider senses, she starts swimming out way far in like a weird direction. And the announcers are like, why is Bethany going so far out of the lineup? That's crazy. So what's happening here is she's turning the testicle into the walnut, just like in yep. Jeremiah. Mm-hmm. So that's awesome. Mm-hmm. But Melina is just watching this happen. She should just go out and block regardless of right. whether she thinks the yeah. instinct is yes. real. Just sit there and block. I've got better things to do. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's a bad plot. What it's else bad plot. Melina would block again. What else are you going to do? Just bulb. Yeah, Exactly. But just then, the biggest wave of the day shows up, and they have this moment where, like, can she get on the wave before the buzzer? But we don't know how this works. It turns out that you just have to be standing up and on the wave before the buzzer, and then all the stuff you do after that counts. But (laughs) we don't know that. So I didn't know that. And you actually hear, like, a buzzer happen. I was like, okay, I think the buzzer happened before she got into that wave. And I'm thinking to myself, if she loses after a goddamn VAR because of being behind by two seconds. I'm going to be so happy. And yes, that's what yep. fucking happens. That's exactly yep. what happens. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Proper VR, VR call. Incredible. But the thing is, she's out there, she's waiting for that big wave, and then the biggest wave of the day comes. And I thought, is that is that massive wave God's reward for having gone to clean up the tsunami? Because <laughs> that's in really poor taste. Bro. Right, yeah, come on, man. Come on. <laughs> so- now, if there was a giant wave and a shark riding it at the same time... <laughs> There's a con. Oh, he that gets a 9.8. Yeah, that'd be awesome. All right. So, yeah, but her, her final wave doesn't count. And again, like, think about what a sour grapes moment this is, because this is a true story. So what she's saying is like, and really, if you think about it, I should have won the other one. I was up before that fucking buzzer hit. And <laughs> it made true. it all the way into her biography. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in reality, they know she was too late. They didn't even bother scoring it. It's like, oh, no, it's fine. It doesn't. We're not even going to watch this because she's definitely too late. We'll just ignore it. Yeah. She might as well give a big speech about how VAR is ruining the game. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, but but Bethany ultimately takes fifth place and Melina takes first. But Melina's so impressed with all her gumption that she lets Bethany join her on the podium. Melina is clearly the hero. Yes. Yes. hundred percent. Melina is the protagonist. Better surfer the entire time and a good person. Well, I was going to say that the, the movie seems to think that we've redeemed Melina. It's like Melina had nothing that she needed redeemed for. Yeah, yeah. she was just like the best surfer the whole time. And she won. <laughs> and she was super nice to Bethany at the end. Yeah, and Bethany asked at one point, you know, so what am I supposed to do now? Like, um, I don't know, write a memoir and sell it as a Christian movie and make loads of money? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, well, so the, so the press all shows up. Of course, everybody wants to talk to Bethany and everything. And one of the reporters asks her, the, he says, this is so fucking weird. He's like, so if you could go back in time now and not have your arm bitten off, would you? What a weird interview question. And she says, no, fucking liar. You fucking <laughs> liar. We're not buying. It. And first of all, it's so stupid that he would ask it in the first place. But secondly, the, the correct fucking answer is yes. Mm. <laughs> no, but but of course no she says actually now that i think about it god really did me a big favor having a shark bite off my arms so you know otherwise what would this movie even be about so it's like you could have given me like arm cancer and i could have had it like you know surgically removed in a much safer fashion and had the same effect or ah. miraculously cured eh, you, never mind it's it's or fine. no it's lessons fine. from god that involve my arm leaving could have just been ah. a really good <laughs> surfer which i feel like i already was yeah so yeah, so th- and and that's it for that. That she vo's some more about more banal. I like surfing shit. There's the whole like life is a lot like surfing. Sometimes you fall down, but then you're you get back up and you're not down anymore. That's literally the fucking analogy we end the movie on. Walnut testicle. Yeah, with faith, Christians, it's okay to watch this even though with all the bikinis. Don't worry about it. Also, we we end with a literal rainbow over the water with the end is just the beginning. Yes! Fucking painful. Fucking painful. 
Oh, yeah, the credits kick in and we get some home movies that that underscore, by the way, the fact that this girl was 13 when this shit happened. Like, she's mm. being played by, like, a 19-year-old actress, so it really doesn't come across until the very end that just how young she was when this happened. So impressive It really is. Like, like to, be, well, to be super clear, like, this is inspiration porn, yes, but it is a very inspiring story. Like, she's... she's yeah, like, the real person is incredible. The way the story's told is kind of a, and therefore we should be able to do anything because if she can do it, but, like, right, the real person yeah. has done some really incredible stuff and is a genuinely impressive person yeah absolutely and she she threw out the first pitch at the oakland a's game in 2004 and it was a good throw a fucking strike yes she nailed it yes it was a good fucking throw and and we see a surfing puppy right at the end the whole fucking movie we was did. right worth it for the oh surfing puppy. she might as well turn a double play like jim abbott <laughs> she's so good he's another one-armed person he's one-armed pitcher he's really impre- i saw him turn a double play it's fucking oh great. fucking yeah all right, so so Marsh, easier or harder than making fun of a terrorist attack against an elementary school? This one, uh, it definitely makes me want to question all the successive life choices I made to lead me to a point where that's a valid question. To ask me. <laughs> <laughs> Always glad to make our uh, guests question their life choices. All right, so Marsh, thanks so much for hanging out with us today. Is there anything in particular you want to plug while we've got you here? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can always check out the Skeptic magazine where I'm publishing lots of uh, interesting skeptical stories on an almost daily basis at skeptic.org.uk. Uh, we're doing some stuff that I'm really, really happy with and really proud of with some re- really fantastic writers. And also we're going to be doing QED in February. So you can look out for uh, more announcements about that and for uh, tickets going on sale when we put tickets on sale. We're a little away away from that yet, but uh, we're really looking forward to having everybody come back and celebrate being allowed to have 700 people in a room without killing everyone. Yeah. Uh, again, we're really looking forward to being able to do that in uh, February next year. Awesome. Best conference ever. Abso- Highly recommend. The absolute best conference in all of skepticism and atheism. And we've been to basically all of them. So I think we, we say that with some experience. <laughs> Whether Marsh likes it or not, we're yeah. there. All right. <laughs> And well, that's going to do it for our review of Soul Surfer. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to lure you back for next week. So Heath, tell us what's on deck. Vindication episode one. It's a Christian themed crime drama on Pure Flix. It's amazing. And we got Moishi back as a guest. Fuck yeah. Get excited. Awesome. All right. So with Moishi to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 311 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Michael Marshall for helping us out today. And a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Data, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Guide, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email my godawful movies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotney. We will draft on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a check of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm Bill Lucius. Promise to work hard and earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club Clubs. Bethany's brothers never had the heart to admit what percentage of her fan mail letters were from random men asking for more footage of her handling food stuff with her feet. <laughs> That's <laughs> accurate. God went on to keep doing white hat shark attacks, <laughs> including <laughs> the murder kind. Yeah, way more than you'd think. The Sharks family overcame his brutal murder, and his kids also went on to get inspirational shark awards. <laughs> <laughs> But you wish Danny LaRue had just lost a limb as a punishment sorry, from God? Sorry, Danny, Danny LaRusso will get a thousand emails. Oh, that's true. Danny yep. LaRue was someone else. Okay, hang on. <laughs> oh, that, that makes it even worse. That's fun. <laughs> that would have been a way better film, though. <laughs> <laughs> I think Danny LaRue was the uh, alter ego of a drag act, I think. Oh, um, right now. In like the 1970s, cool. 80s, I think oh, so. It would have been a very different tournament at the end, but it would have been a tournament <laughs> yeah. nonetheless. Okay. Sorry, just getting a sip. I'm going to take a fucking gulp. I'm not in this. Do it. Take a bolt. I'm adequately right. hydrated. <laughs> Took care of my needs ahead of time. <laughs> I arrived having eaten. I am <laughs> medium hydrated like I'm supposed to be. Idiots. All right, here we go. Interstitial three. <laughs> and, and apologies for giving you the uh, the bulk of the copy in both of these. But that's that's not, not a problem. I, I do... 
I do wonder how much Americans spend on toilet paper if they can buy a B-Day on what they don't spend on toilet paper in a couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> we, use, we, use a, we use a lot. I'd we like do a lot of, of shit uh, written down. Yeah. A lot um, of shitting. I don't know if you saw the tweet about how uh, the England could, uh, how the UK could outdrink America. We're the same way, but with shitting, right? Like we could, <laughs> we could out shit a country with five times our population. <laughs> Fair. You'd have to move the bar closure beyond midnight to even come close to it, whatever. No, it's it's ridiculous. I just, I just, but it's yeah, a tweet no. that's going around. Anyway, so yeah, Raycon had. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.